Okay. Uh, is there, was that, were you turning on the mic? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Welcome right, back I'll, to the watch. Welcome back to the watch. You probably didn't hear that first, right? I, look, I'm just going to start again. Let's do it again. Welcome back to the watch. Rings of Power, episode four. Chat, how are you? Let us know if you can hear us. We are live streaming this review as per usual. And, uh, whoa, well, ring episode four. Nathan, what were your thoughts on it? I am done. <laughs> I am, like, I got halfway through this and I stopped. I had to get up, walk around, and really mentally force myself to finish this episode. Because I tell you what, after half an hour, I went, what am I watching? What's going on? Because the stuff that does happen is mind-boggling, the fact that it happens, and other stuff... You watch the whole scene and you go, great, what was any of that for? <laughs> any of it. And so I, I'm just going crazy, honestly, mentally, from this show. Seriously. Six pages this week. You got six. You, Nathan, you've got more than me. <laughs> what on earth? <laughs> you've outdone your like. All right, so we need to make sure we get all your yeah, notes. Yeah. So you, when oh. we're going chronologically, make sure you don't miss anything because... Um, Oh, yeah. I mean, most of it's just me complaining yeah. about characters and story, which, I mean, I guess it's <laughs> that's what That's why you're here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, this episode, I, you know what? I think every other episode, if you were normie enough, you could accept, you know, it wasn't that bad. This one, I think, was... You can't defend this one. <laughs> you, you honestly cannot tell me that that hour and, what, hour and a half, hour ten minutes was worth my time at all in terms of uh, a viewer. <laughs> Well said. I mean, if I wasn't actively reviewing this, okay, because that kind of keeps me engaged. Mm. I'm like, all right, I'm breaking apart every single line you say, right? Yeah. If I wasn't doing that, I would be bored out of my brain. Yeah. But even then, right, even then, there are such howlingly dumb things in this episode that even I, I wouldn't be able to... I guess, you know, yes, oh, look, you can turn your brain off, right? But even when you try and turn your brain off, that would pierce the kind of barrier of... Logic, uh, you yeah, have. like yeah. inattention that you try and do when you're, I'm just going to sit back and try and enjoy it. I, like there are so, so things that are so dumb that it just breaks through and it's yeah. like a slap in the face. Like, what? What? <laughs> there are parts that take you out of it so abruptly, just because you, mm -hmm. like you say, you just go, hold on a minute, what was that? Gladriel. <laughs> So, so we're a bit riled up, indeed. Oh. We're so riled up, you could almost say there is a tempest in us. Oh my gosh! <laughs> See, in the trailer, Richard, <laughs> I thought that was going to be at least some big speech. There was reason for it. Yeah. It was the most out of the blue, Comes out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I think Glitchell was mentally unstable because when she says these things, you're just like any normal person would react. Um, Calm down. Okay. <laughs> and it's again, it's, it's technically a non sequitur from what the Queen was saying. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like it doesn't even... get started on the non sequitur, Shan. <laughs> this episode is so guilty. <laughs> I mean, this show, like, I almost feel bad picking apart this show because it, now it's starting to feel like it was written by children. I know it's not, but but it's like, you know, when a child gives you a drawing, mm. they worked really hard on it. They really worked hard on these... The thing is, though, why we are is that this isn't made by children, OK? It's made by supposedly competent adults that are professionals in their field mm. with an insanely massive budget. There is so many problems in this show that... No, 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 like... They don't deserve. I, I get benefit of the doubt here, especially with the way they marketed, how disingenuous they were, the, the dishonesty they've been going about, silencing reviews, stopping reviews, and, and fudging the numbers. Like the, the the view numbers are nowhere near as good as they're saying. Uh, that's a larger kind of commentary, though. We need to mm. focus back on episode four. All right, so. We're, we're going to be talking about non-spoilers, which is what we'll be doing, and then we'll be getting to an actual spoiler uh, discussion. And this episode, so much of it, so much, is, is reliant on stupidity. <laughs> Astronomically dumb things happen to justify the scenes and uh, the things that they want to happen in the mm. show which just undermines everything. It's like, what, what are you doing? Why? And you know why? It's because it's a problem that I mentioned quite extensively in the last episode review. It's, this is a consistent problem. Yeah. 
when I say it's a sign of bad writing, it really is because it's now it's consistent that they're consistently bad. And so it wasn't like, oh, they just goofed up. They, no, they're, like they're doing this error, this mistake so often, so regularly now, they're just, they're just not good at this, okay? Mm. And they don't have the talent to be able to naturally set up the events and payoffs that they want, so they just allow brain-numbingly stupid things to happen to get there. Mm. And I think the perfect non spoiler example is the there's a Tempest in me line. Like, <laughs> you, you knew the writer's room, they had that line. We need to use that somewhere. <laughs> and then they were in this conversation and they thought, okay, how can we contrive this line? <laughs> yeah, like, how do we... How do so we... the Gladwell says this. <laughs> and yeah, you're right. The lead-in is like, they're, they're forcing it. They're really forcing so it. So many... F and forced moments mm -hmm. all oh. the time. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm baffled <laughs> at how... Just awfully, they, they can't go from like, I, I don't like. <laughs> okay, lay it out. Writing one on one. People walk into a bar, mm -hmm. have conversation. Yeah. Walk out of bar having had that conversation. I, I'm a bit. Of they <laughs> can't do that. Here. Yes. People will walk in, say something, and then suddenly have a, a separate conversation. Separate event will happen. Yep. Or someone brings something up, and you go, "Hang on a minute." That, we weren't talking about that mm -hmm. all the time, uh, just, this whole episode. Oh, and so often, right, in this show, they, they tell you the characteristics of characters, people like Nori. Nori is, you know, all the, everyone's commenting and telling us about Nori when she's not... She, I, and so they lack the ability to actually show us properly. And in this episode specifically, what's really interesting, they do a show and then right after it, they give us a tell for the exact same thing, but... What they showed was so incompetently demonstrated. <laughs> you're like, oh, that's why you're telling us everything because when you try and show us it, it comes off they really bad. They can't show for, to save themselves. <laughs> like all the giant set pieces and amazing monarch moments, mm -hmm. they, they, it, it is just glitter. But mm -hmm. they can't actually use that glitter to tell the story. Like mm -hmm. there's parts where you'll see an environment or you know a, a nice big wide angle or something but then when they want to tell you something they'll have a close-up shot of someone doing something and not even <laughs> show off the fancy thing they have to begin with like yeah. someone oh uh, yeah there's just there's just ugh. we'll be going into the specifics so i mean the show look it's not it's not getting better it's as dumb as anything i could the funny thing is i could see people potentially enjoying this more because you could say that there's a little bit more suspense, but my goodness, any suspense is robbed mm. because everything that happens is so predictable. I not, at three or four separate times, I have written down where I pause, I'm writing or something, and I'm like, this is going to happen. Yeah, and the yeah. very next line is, they do that exact thing. I think that's what annoyed me the most when mm. watching this was that I knew what I was going to watch. Mm -hmm. And so it was a chore to write a note of that and then go and watch mm. it and go, okay, next scene, same thing happened. Yeah, yeah. And again, and again. This is so painfully predictable, which is the title of the, the, this uh, review. Yeah. I, that's the summary of this episode. Painfully predictable, but such contrived, stupid setups as well. It's layers upon layers of bad. And so uh, we're still in the ranges of like a one and a two out of ten here. This is still a horribly written show. All the expensive uh, set pieces and special effects is just sprinkles on a turd, yeah. okay? I think maybe there was two, three minutes where I actually was calm and mm -hmm. controlled, but compare that to the over an hour of what I had to witness, <laughs> it does not redeem it at all. That one scene that I was like, that wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, Nathan. <laughs> Thank goodness it wasn't insane. <laughs> the question is, was it good? Um, there was like one line which I actually was like, oh, look at that. Mm. A, a moderately competently constructed line. One in the whole episode that stood out to me. And I wrote it down, so we'll get there. So that, that's our spoiler-free section. We're going to get into specifics. But before we get into specifics, uh, guess what? This, this uh, review, this thing, is brought to you. It's sponsored by something. You know what it's sponsored by, Nathan? Oh, I don't want... Uh, I mean, I was going to make a joke, but I think we should um, just be... <laughs> Sponsored by me. Um, my graphic novel, the graphic novel adaptation of my book, is now live, the launch campaign, and so you can go secure your copy. It's only going to be out for a short time. It's pretty exciting. 
I got one of the best artists you can find uh, to do this. He's an industry vet veteran, so the art just looks amazing. And we have a very brief one-minute trailer. It's just a small little one-minute trailer that we want to show you quickly uh, to promo the um, the uh, the uh, graphic novel. And then we'll come back and we'll finish off the review. Yes, so we're going to need it on that one. Oh, oh yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, that's a problem because I didn't upload it on this one. <laughs> I thought you said but it doesn't have. I thought you. I think it's in the top oh, order. Oh, I think you're right. I think you're right. I okay. I saw it there. Oh, the, the, we've also had reported that there might be some static as well that we'll try and fix. Um, but Nathan, share some of your other thoughts while I quickly look this up. Um, so they they introduced more cringy romance couples. Um, yeah. I think one of the worst uh, plagues of this show is they can't write two people well talking together. Mm -hmm, there are mm -hmm. times where... Um, you know the good old lovey dovey couple. They they talk in a conversation, and I'm I'm just baffled. Also, like mother son conversations, does not feel like a, a parent relationship at all. <laughs> and then sibling conversation, like just every conversation between what you would assume is natural and easy to do, were not at all. The most natural lines were ones either from friends or obviously, yeah, you know enemies basically all right so we're almost ready will this pick up the audio from the computer it should if i turn it on all righty so check this out it's a brief one minute trailer sponsored by chronos Cavaval, shadow of the conqueror and yet uh get, you keep talking i'll do a thing for a second okay okay so one of the other kind of takeaways from this episode is we're professionals here by the way <laughs> galadriel she does not get better. Um, uh, they're, they're, so uh, there are, like, she condescends to a queen. And there was a moment, so there were two moments in this, while I was watching this, that was so dumb, I busted a gut laughing. I just, I couldn't stop. It was so damn funny. And, uh, I mean, we'll get to it specifically, but one was uh, a prediction. It's like, how could you do this? You're, you're so just arrogant and condescending Gladriel, right? Where she is demanding something, you know, and I, I was like, my, my, I literally wrote down, this idiot, just throw her in prison. <laughs> and the very next scene <laughs> was bang, <laughs> prison, like bars thrown up and she's in prison. I was like, I, I laughed, I was like. <laughs> I think I got on there too where it's like, yes, they <laughs> finally did it. Okay, I think we can do All, all right, all right, we're almost ready with, and um, Gary from Nerdrotic's been sending people over in his high. Oh, awesome. dude, Gary, <laughs> legend. Okay, we're going to quickly, quickly promo this. Shadow, Shadow of the Conqueror is coming to you in an epic graphic novel adaptation with the incredibly talented art of Mike S. Miller. The book will be separated into four graphic novel volumes. This first one, entitled Enemies of Self, has 48 pages of stunning art visualizing the amazing and unique world of Everfall with some of the best work Mike has ever done. With special collector edition covers and limited Everfall merchandise, this is your one and only chance to secure these special versions of this phenomenal epic fantasy graphic novel. Chronicles of Everfall, Shadow of the Conqueror, Volume 1, Enemies of Self. So, pretty exciting, guys. Get your copy. Um, if there's not a link in the description... There is. There is? There I is made sure there was. We, we're on top of some stuff. <laughs> some <laughs> stuff we are. Some stuff we are. Uh, seriously, though, guys, you might notice that I love leather bounds. There's a leather bound version that you can get of my novel. And if you haven't tried it out, this is the best time to give it a go. Um, uh, all right, all right. So, uh, with, with that, um, uh, with that promo, bit of bit of self self shilling uh spoilers okay <sighs> let us begin so it, it doesn't start strong let's actually bring up um uh, let's bring up the thing and we'll go chronologically okay so this is full screened and uh we'll pause it all right so this is the the flashback and then we'll, yes. it gets to the 
the opening. You know, I think the opening is like my favourite thing in this show at the moment. The opening sequence. <laughs> That sequence there with with the sand, with the, the sand. fancy sand, fancy sand, which I heard has an actual, real world scientific thingy. Like it, it, it makes it very cool. But um, the starting yeah. line of this episode, I'm not kidding. Very first line is uh, the queen telling everyone something that they already know. Yes. I mean, they do this again and again. Like it's this is it's called Maiden Butler. I explained in the previous episode where characters will say something that everyone in the scene knows purely for the audience's thing, but it's not even needed. Like the context is just like you know, um, thank you for blessing my child, my queen, or something like that. You know, I, I get just something as simple as that. But instead, um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, this core, in this, she says, in this court we gather daily to hammer out this island's future. They, they know that. <sighs> I always just think that's such a poor line, hammer out your future. Like, you know what? I'll hammer out an edit for you, Shad. Yeah. I'll hammer out some work for you. <laughs> but we don't every single day sit down and we hammer. I mean, it's really hard to, I don't want to yell too much for you all, but hammer out something. And she says every day we hammer out the future. But... We also see that like in the episode, they don't really prepare much for the future, even though she has yeah. some visions and concerns for the future. Not much is done for their future, actually. <laughs> I just saw a chat. Someone says, Nerdronic Raid. Oh, that's awesome. We love it. Thank you, Gary. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so there's one thing. I, well, there's like two things, actually. Mm -hmm. I want to follow up from last episode. There's two criticisms mm -hmm. that we didn't get to mention in the last episode of you that are so big that I just I need to follow up with them right now okay. because they're, they're howlers, right? Remember, big the biggest brain moment of the last episode, which is just hilariously stupid, was that the Mark of Sauron is actually a map. And, and the Numenorians had like a written letter from a spy they had for years that no one bothered to read, which explains his entire plan. I like, it beggars belief. I can't believe it's like, they really did that. It's so dumb, right? But also it's like this Sauron, he has this super secret plan, okay? And he decides to inscribe the map of his plan on the dead bodies of his enemies. Hmm. And random places where he, he hangs out, like on the altar. It's like, you really try to keep your plan a secret when you're just giving the map to where you're located on the bodies of your dead enemies. And then what's hilarious about this, Gladriel is more stupid than orcs. Orcs are said to be not very smart, but Sauron has the faith that they will know what this mark is when they see it. Yet Gladriel had it for thousands of years and didn't figure this out. Why am I getting amnesia from... I feel like I was watching something the other day for, for research on Lord of the Rings of Power stuff. And yeah, I think she said that, like, our, our wisest people have looked at this, have not just, like, figured out what it is. It's not just Gladriel. All of the elders, yes! everyone has looked at this hundreds of years. No one's thought to put it next to a map. I know. And what's so hilarious about this, like, as soon as they actually gave us a clear shot of it on the side, it's like, I, my instant thought was like, oh, there's a bounce. Oh, it's, it's Mount, Mount yeah. Doom and, and Mordor. I, before they even said it, it was so obvious. First glance. Hundreds of years and, yeah, and glad you <laughs> every corner, except for Numenor and where the tower was, yeah. and, you know, where she went to go look at the Maya. Mm. Yeah. And so if, if anyone tries to say, oh, the Numenorians didn't read that letter because it was in the black speech. Are you kidding me? Like, they get this highly sensitive covert information from a spy amongst the bad people, right? And you uh, don't read it? And you don't bother finding anyone who could read the language like, to find out what it says. In World Wars, I think they learned the language of their enemies because, you know, it's a bit important to figure out, intercept <laughs> stuff. You want to learn black speech? Oh, that's bad. Now you want to learn it's that. It's bafflingly stupid, right? And and that, they actually revealed that as like a big twist. It's like, ha ha! You didn't see that coming? No, I didn't see it coming because I wouldn't have thought you would have done something so stupid! Guess I was wrong! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Back to this episode. <laughs> so anyway, she has the baby, right? And um, th then there's like a tremor. And I'm like, I you might want to give it back. It's just like she yeah, just walks, she just walks, walks on the baby. I'm taking it now with me. 
just like, lady, give it back. And then Numenor is destroyed and is like, oh, it's, it's obviously. Again, for a moment, I, like, for, for a little moment, I was like, damn, okay, Amazon, you got balls doing this. <laughs> ruining Numenor. And then I was like, now, nah, surely, oh, yeah. Of yeah, course, of course. As soon as it's like. But there was a moment I was impressed. I, I was like, oh, the show's turning a good point to wipe these idiots out. I was like, oh, no, no, of course it's a dream. Um, psych! And then we come to a baffling scene. Um, I, I need my pencil to mark off my notes as we go. So I've done that one, that one, that one, that one. Okay. Um, <laughs> so oh. there's, there's this guy, right? See, see the, the, we come to the the um, the councillor man, and he has this pearl of. Of wisdom. In fact, it's it's even about wisdom. Nathan, I think you know where oh, I'm going with this. This conversation, I clenched my teeth <laughs> listening to this. Um, oh, because like uh, the kid's just like, oh, I didn't really do something like doing something important. Because he's mm. like, ah, ah, ah. um, and then he's like, statecraft is the art of attending to small matters as diligently as grand ones. Should like to think you'd learned that by now. And he's like, oh, I was only trying to be clever. <laughs> What do you mean you're trying to be clever? You just yelled out a guy's name and walked up to him. I know. How was that clever? <laughs> that was even before we got to the wire <laughs> bit. You're right. How was that clever? <laughs> hey, hey! Calm down. Sorry, just trying to be clever. <laughs> 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 Who wrote that? Yeah, I, <laughs> Who spoke that? It's like, like that makes sense. It's like they had the the light, the the answer to this was a different conversation, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're like they mixed up the pages. He, he, and then they just grabbed his answer to something completely separate and just shoehorned and forced it in. Yeah. Or they just don't know how conversation and language but I, works. I'm just shocked that like the writers wrote this. <laughs> they have a whole crew here listening to this conversation. They all go, yeah, no, it's all good. I know. That's I, fine. Who's reviewing you? It's just, it's, like, even yeah. as actors, I would be like, mm, this doesn't make much sense. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess Amazon just says, shh. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> His money. Give us yeah, a good review. Exactly. Um, and so then I, yeah. I'll take this next one. It's like. Cleverness is for men of small ambition. And first I was like, hang on, what? And then he follows up with this, Perla. I'd much rather you were wise. It's kind of the same thing. <laughs> See, that's why he said clever to begin with, because he wanted to be like, clever is for men of small ambition. That's why he said, oh, sorry, I just got to try to be clever, even though he wasn't being I know, clever. They were trying to with. force. And then they're trying to force in this line of being wise. They're, they're trying to make, like, again, this has been a, a hallmark of this entire series where they're trying to sound far more intelligent than the actual intelligence of the communication of the lines in the script, mm. right? And they're just, if we, if we say it like we're intelligent and smart, people will think we are. No. But sorry. when you actually break it down, it's like, cleverness? Why is this? It is, like, there's a lot of context... Where it's a bit the same. You can be clever, you can be wise. And look, I know that sometimes you can try and find a bit of a divergence where, you know, uh, you, uh, you could say there's knowledge, but then there's ability to apply the knowledge is wisdom mm. or something like that. And, uh, but cleverness is like, if you're clever, you would know how to apply. And so, so cleverness is the application of knowledge. Yeah. And so you can't even make a good distinction in, in these two concepts too well. Like, like I'd like to ask him, What's, what's the difference? Just according to you, just so I know. Because <laughs> you're obviously using definitions that not normal people use. No, no. <laughs> but yeah, that, I mean, what, what were two conversations into this show and already I, I was just like, are you kidding? We are off to a good start. <sighs> oh. Holy crap, we just got a $500 super chat. No. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Gosh, we might have to pause and read that one out. That one is deserving of it. Um, we are joined here by my lovely wife, the lady. Do you reckon you could click on that and just read the super chat out for us? The $500 one, because that is epic. Actually, I think I can bring it up, just because there might be an echo. Um, this quote, so this is by Crazy Tiger Person for $500 US. Thank you, sir. This quote is by King Theoden. 
Where now are the horse and the rider? Where is the horn that was blowing? They have passed like rain on the mountain, like a wind on the meadow. The days have gone down in the west behind the hills into shadow. How did it come to this? Every Tolkien fan, when they see the rings of power. <laughs> well, I like to say what Gladwell said, which is don't refer to me as a horse. <laughs> Compare and contrast. <laughs> See, I thought that was a tempest was the worst one, but no. Don't refer to me as a horse. But the other's like, that's right. She's definitely not a horse. She's a cow. Get it right, no, people. Donkey. Donkey, maybe. <laughs> you know. You know. Oh, my goodness. Thank you very much for that super chat, especially for where it took us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so my next comment is when they talk about the elf workers. Uh, yeah. Nathan has more comments than me. Uh, right. oh, so I don't want to skip over anything chronologically. You know, that I'm up to the elf people. The, uh, the, uh, like the, the, <sighs> <laughs> Again, remember how I said one of the hallmarks of this episode is stupid things to justify where they want the story to go. Yeah. First case in point. I'm going to write this down. This is number one. I want to keep track of, of these events, okay? They want conflict between commoners and elves for the story. Mm. And so their reasoning to get it is, uh, is like, elf workers who don't sleep, don't tire. El and I was like, hang on, elves don't sleep? Is that they don't tire? I mean, I guess Gladwell didn't because she well, swam the, the ocean. ocean. Or <laughs> oh, yeah, they don't tire. We saw Elrond tiring Elrond. with a hammer. <laughs> Fair point. That, that was from my my wife, Lady. She, she, all she had to do was, like, hammer. And I was like, that's correct. Touche. Yep, no they clearly there. do get tired. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's bull crap. And then they're, they're basically like, how does he reach this point? They have one elf who happens to have been stranded in the ocean, gets washed up, and suddenly they take this massive leap to say, they're going to bring in a mountain of elves that'll steal all our work and everything like that. I'm like, oh, hey, calm down. It's a bit of a leap, don't you think? Just like, we're not there yet, not even by a long shot. No, no. But they want it to make this artificial conflict, right? The, the, this is the reasons, the best reasons the writers could come up with to create... Numenorians dislike elves. Mm. And then they start chanting, Elf lover, elf lover, uh, elf Mentioning lover. the queen. And so not only is this dumb, but this really demonstrates a massive ingrained unreasonable hatred amongst all Numenorians with elves. Yeah. And, and all the queen did was say, we don't want you here, you, but we'll keep you for three days and then you're out. That's all she did. And she's like, she's ready to just punt her out of Numenor, right? Yep. And that's their reaction. And so you really, TV show, you really want me to honestly believe what happens at the end of this episode when she commits an entire army to Galadriel's forces that what you set up here means that they'll be perfectly okay with that? Bullcrap. Get out of here, show. You are contradicting yourself blatantly. You do not justify that... 360 twist like, like the 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 reverses on motivations in this show is giving me whiplash it's like holy crap you know and you know what it wouldn't be that hard to find a decent reason to hate elves because they're not very likable in the show anyway i know just say they're condescending cows that hate humans and think say... they're better than everyone just look at how this like look at how they spoke to our queen yeah i would yeah. believe that i'll be like yeah yeah you wrote it in the show yourself <laughs> and you couldn't even point to that reason. And the reason is, is because they don't think Gladriel is unlikable. They think Gladriel's a girl boss. Isn't she oh. awesome? <laughs> they unironically think that, right? Uh, and, yeah, that's it. But the other thing is, they, they basically really wanted to force in a look at how um, bigoted these people are because they're so against immigration and things. I really got strong, like, yep. anti-immigration vibes yep. from these. They really put in the modern-day politics in that one. Yep. And it's, it's, and it's blatant. It's, it's painfully obvious. Uh, and, I, but yeah, I have a note just like calling her an elf lover. It's like, what, for one imprisoned elf? Like, yeah. She's not even treating her nice. And they just all start chanting it. They're like, yes, great! <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Um, and then they, they even say that, like, one I like, could threaten us. And I'm like, of course. Oh, that's right. It's when this guy comes in. Mm. So he says, 
People, people, do you really think that one elf, a castaway, could threaten us? And I'm like, no, I wouldn't think that because that would be a completely retarded assumption. Yeah. <laughs> but again, remember how they wanted to force something? They wanted, this is the other thing I want to, they wanted to force this guy to make him sound like, look how political and, He's and smart. diplomatic he, he is. Control a crowd. By pointing out something that is so painfully obvious yeah. and also pointing out something that's also ridiculous. Like, guys, you are thinking there's going to be an invasion based on one castaway stranded elf. You idiot. And so all it does is reveal, point out how incredibly dumb this setup is and the uh, the Numenorians' reactions to Gladriel is. They actually point it out with this character, but then they're trying to play it off like, gosh, this guy's so good. Well, even just the way that he, like, presents it, because he's like, basically, you know, we have done a lot more than this one elf, we can handle this elf, and everyone, mm -hmm. they, they go quieter, but they're still kind of angry, so he's just walking around, yeah. they're just like, yeah, elf lover, and then, and then he says the famous line, which I just, oh my, gosh. my friends, trust me. That alone, I was like, okay, that, that's when you don't trust someone, yeah. but this one says, trust me, you know. <laughs> For by the calluses on my hands, I swear, the elven hands will never take Numenor helm, N Numenor's helm. She will remain, as always, a kingdom of men. Drinks all round! This part, I was, I was like, if I had a drink, I would have spat it out, right? So It was so... Because oh. he's giving you a speech, right? This is, like, he, he wouldn't have been able to predict that, um, that, that people would be talking about yeah. this or anything like that. And he gives a speech, and then suddenly he's like, drinks all round! And then there's people... With, with the trays and drinks just standing there ready to go. I'm like, where did they come from? you telling me he just organised this? like, just, I, I need you to stand here. I don't know how long it might be all day. Just look, look, look. To Trust. derail this conversation a little bit, okay. only once in my life has this happened to me. Really? That's someone coming in the corner with drinks. It was when we're looking at venues for my wedding, which mm -hmm. clearly, you know, they set that up. They want you to pay. To they, do, they do, they and do. And so they set it up, so, you know, you go here for a little bit, there, and someone hides in the bushes, and then once you come in the corner looking at the beautiful view, they come out in the bushes, literally out of the bushes. They step out and they go, <laughs> do you want a drink? And that's the one time you're like, you know what? You're going me, but you know what? I'm okay with it. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll pay for this. But if they but were but doing it, this here, exactly. in this context... Because you're, you're trying to get me to do something that I shouldn't... Yeah, it's almost like you were in a situation in which the people could predict, mm. all right? Like, he, he's just like, they're trying to play this off like, oh, no, the crowd's getting a bit riled up. Yeah. I'll just step in, uh, you know, and solve it myself because I'm so good at politicking and things. And then he doesn't, and then he brings out drinks. And like, also, I don't think drinks always calms a crowd either. No, it doesn't. <laughs> when you think about it... I mean, that's a lot of drinks, isn't it? Like, like I, I can't, yeah. like, I'm trying to count. You would need, what, at least four fully trained things to give that amount of drinks out? We only saw, like, a couple. It's just... Uh, also, it's, like, in the middle of the day as well. Yeah. Everybody has work they need to go to or things and lives. And so... Oh, no. Drink! Be merry! They have this. And this was such a dumb, dumb scene. Like, so artificially forced. Like, the, the speech was so hollow and fake, it's like, no one who really heard that, who was actually on, you know, chanting, hating someone, everything mm. like that, that's not going to calm them down. But the show is trying to tell me it did. It's like, yeah. no, you, I'm not there at all. Like, compare this to great speeches in cinema and stuff, like the speech from Independence Day from the um, the uh, the president, right? Mm. You, when you're watching that, you're almost ready to go like, yeah! Like, like with him, right? Yeah, yeah. This, you're just like... I just think they're all raging alcoholics because it also happened with, um, what's his name? Harold or whoever? He's like, drinks all around! And everyone's like, oh, we like this guy now! So you can manipulate Numenorians with just alcohol. With alcohol. That, uh, and just... they will be your best friend. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. They just have got alcohol everywhere. Yeah. Ready to go. Pre poured. There's just people walking around the trays just in case. It's like, it's like, you know, and, and I could, like, they were just. There's a seamstress, and she's got a tray there, and someone's like, oh, I'm feeling a bit thirsty. Oh, we really got it! Not yet. Okay. Oh. <laughs> um, it's absurd. The, 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 mm. the context headcanon we need for this to make sense. Yeah. And just just to make sure, because, the, you know, the writers think you're stupid, right? And so they have to spell it out. Yep. Spell it out. Or flirt it out. And so... Uh, as poorly as the scene was constructed, what the audit, what the writers are trying to tell you about this character is painfully obvious. You couldn't have been more blatant if you tried, right? But because they think you're idiots, this guy speaks to her and just 
gives us exposition, explanation of uh, the, the, the councilman guy. There isn't a name in the city he doesn't know, a crowd he can't turn, a favour he isn't owed. And I'm like, you're just giving me a character description. Like, what is this crap? Also, a favour that isn't owed. Oh, that's a bit ominous, I think. <laughs> what has he done with I his money? Oh. And this is a clear example. This is the example I was giving where they have show and tell side by side. Mm. And their attempt at, te at, at showing, like this guy turning a crowd, was so forced and un like uh, unearned, right, to get there based on what he was saying. It was so, And the setup was so dumb, I was like, that's probably why they're not showing. Because they're incompetent at it. <laughs> That's all I just tell us. Yeah. Is, oh, it's pretty bad. So, uh, my next comment is oh, another forced one about her name. <laughs> Do you have that? Yeah, I got that too. But even just before, I thought, man, it. it, it just this conversation, and then he's like, Sir, you want a drink? <laughs> Makes you forget your troubles. You know? What's your name? And then obviously they have the cut in with like. The, the craftsman whoever says her name. but Like, it was so contrived and convenient, where it's like, and your name is... He asks her, sorry, this is literally, and your name is, and then someone comes off from a side screen, um, a year in, plans now! Yeah. And um, <laughs> Convenience. I mean, what, the, what I laughed about this, they, they love pointless contrivances so much that they'll even throw them in when it's completely unneeded. You didn't need that here. She could have just, my here is my name, yeah. right? And the thing is, because they'll throw them in when they can't think of anything else creative to justify the thing, so they'll just put in a contrivance, this happens, mm -hmm. right? And at least you can say, I know why you did it, it's lazy, it's bad, and the reasoning is stupid, but at least you had a reason. This one, it's not even that! They just decided to throw it in there, this artificial, like, perfectly timed name delivery, and it's just like, come on, guys, are you that lazy? Yes, they are. I was just finding it weird that this guy's picking up this girl by talking about how much he hates his dad, <laughs> his father, and it's like, you know, my dad, he's real good at these things. So annoying. Anyway, what's your name? Like, that's not how you pick up girls. <laughs> I've done it for a while, but still, no wonder she's like, oh, thank goodness, this guy's creepy. I know. <laughs> but he doesn't stop, he persists later in the episode. Mm -hmm. He persists. Uh, all right, go, go. Actually, no, but before, okay. she says, my troubles have been too hard won. So, and that, she just wants to keep her troubles. As, uh, apparently, she's earned her troubles. And if you have troubles, right... Wouldn't it be good to get rid of, especially if they're big, bad troubles? I mean, I feel like her troubles are just like, oh man, my, my life's just hectic right now. They're not really troubles. Yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. This is another one of those pseudo-intellectual things where it sounds like, you know, you could really, you know, like, you know, get relief from your troubles. My troubles are too, well, what was yeah. that, hard, like too uh, hard one or something? Yeah, like. yeah, yeah, troubles have been too, too hard one. And I was like, so she's proposing the philosophy that she's going to keep her troubles and let them drag her down in life yeah. uh, because they were just hard to get through. Yeah. Well, hard to get. I don't even... Yeah. <laughs> but... And then they just force a romance scene with him being all like, ooh. And again, these are two characters. I don't care anything. This guy said yes. he was clever a moment ago when he yelled at his dad. <laughs> she's a craftswoman who... You're absolutely has right. no... Who cares about these characters? It's a There's waste no of time. Motive. Nothing to really care about, no conflict. Who can, like, you're right. Who gives a crap? No relevance to the greater plot. Daytime television has more interesting <laughs> things that happen. Yes. Okay, I'd rather watch the news. There is so much wasted, pointless drivel in this show. Case in point, okay? Uh, so, new scene, and uh, the Queen is like, she's like, you stole an ancient scroll. And I'm like... He's right there. He let her take it. Like, like yeah. This, uh, uh, they checked it out of a library with someone who was there. Had a card, basically. <laughs> Can you imagine? She's like, you know, I checked it out. Due by date isn't yeah, two weeks. Yeah, Lindell gave me his card. Yeah. But the queen is just like going out of her way to be disingenuous, which doesn't make her look right. And it's like, yeah, he's right there. And he doesn't. He's not going to speak up. She's like, oh, I, I let her take it. <laughs> well, he does speak up, and then she basically mm. talks over him. Yeah. But um. Just the way she says, you vex me, elf. I welcome you as a guest. <laughs> I, would you say she welcomed her as a guest? 
Not really. No. I mean, he did say that he has to take her to his higher ups to for policy, and then she shows up, and everyone's like, oh, "Get her away!" <laughs> like no one can be consistent in why anyone is here or what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then uh, Galadriel is trying to explain that. Um, uh, Oh, bad things, orcs! Look at the look at the thing, and uh, and we've got um, uh, oh, the, the the prince of the uh, the Southlands, uh, um, uh, he was his lost he's the lost heir in exile, and I was like, maybe I mean like exile usually implies that your own people exiled you. Mm. He was driven out by orcs. It's like I don't know. I'm not really not really feeling exiled vibes from him. Um, but then so. She basically says, yeah, nice story. And I'm like, hang on, this is your bit of covert information that you ignored for years. Yeah. And you, like, you got awarded this island, Numenor, based on what happened with Morgoth. So you definitely know that Morgoth's bad. And Sauron, you would have definitely heard who Sauron is. Big bad guy. You now have pretty stark evidence of Sauron, Mr. Big Bad, alive, doing bad things. And she's like, nice story. It'll... You've uh, yeah, that... Uh, I'm just so mad because we found this out last episode and there's been no urgency at all. <laughs> episode four is just... She knows, Saron, where he is. <coughs> What's going to happen? And she's still just like, you know, that Southlander, he was once a king. We should be friends again. And we still don't know why they don't like the elves. <laughs> Virgil's like, we should reform and, you know, come back together as, mm -hmm. as a people and, and companionship. And the Queen's just like, nah. <laughs> Doesn't say why. It, it's hilarious, right? And, I mean, if you try to take what the context of the show sets up, she could honestly say, this mark has been around for thousands of years and the Southlands have been fine. Mm. Like, clearly there's no big worry. We can wait around to yeah. take our time. Take your time getting back there. Oh, but then I, just, I saw the line I wrote, what she said, which is the ending one, which I was just like, what? what? Uh, she says, in this court we hear many proposals. I dare, say, I dare say yours is the most surprising and ambitious I've heard this week. Or in, in weeks. So, so last week, someone just reported that an evil dark lord had been rising somewhere in the world that could threaten everyone's lives. <laughs> like, weeks? Weeks? Are you proposing <laughs> that your people would come to you every couple of weeks with say, things like this? And say, hey, we need to gather, get an army. And like, yeah. Again, Bob, you say this every... Bob, okay, it's fine. The dwarves, they're not going to steal your egg rolls. <laughs> <laughs> This information's a little bit more important than you would hear every yeah. couple of weeks. And she's just like, I just don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> weeks? Like, characters overreact to things that don't justify it, and then do not react to things that are really important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, glad you gets in her face a bit, acts like a, a cow. Oh. But then also, oh my, maybe it is... You go, because I don't uh... want to miss any of your notes. That's when, uh, okay, no, okay. So, and then she, then they have a separate conversation with all this, where you know the whole, uh, you know, I haven't heard this in weeks and whatever. And she says, uh, uh, saying, whether the the other guy, the the Southlander, whether he's a king or a carpenter, he will mm. face judgment. Oh yeah, for beating up the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he, did anyone mention that he was assaulted? Like there, there is. Evidence? Granted, granted, you could say you went a bit excessive, but there's a bit of a self-defense. How many people were you, is he up against? Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, again, they're talking about Sauron, and then they switch back to oh, South and the guy, you know, whether whether he's king or a carpenter, <laughs> doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> but yeah, then we have the line that the, comes up. Okay, so yeah, uh, this is uh, gl just glorious, right? So the queen says, "What authority?" Do you speak? Of what authority do you speak, Elf? That of your people? Or are you a castaway grasping for a handle in a handhold in a tempest? It's like, that's that's a bit of a a, a wordy um uh, is it a euphemism? Is that what I like when you because she's basically saying, you're grasping at straws. And that's that's an effective one because it's short and it yeah. gets the concept across. A castaway grasping for a handhold in a tempest. <laughs> alright, alright. 
even if we give you that, because the Numenorians are sailors and, and all that and everything, her instant response, <laughs> there is a tempest in me. <laughs> I think we need to watch it. Is the sound on the computer still? Uh, yeah, I can make it on. Let's turn the sound on because this is, this is special. Um, oh, oh, let me play it. That won't help. Or are you a castaway, grasping for a handhold in a... Tempest. There is a tempest in me. <laughs> Hand on. There is a tempest in me. I'm just that was the line for the trailer. See, when I saw that in the trailer, I thought it was going to be more built up, dramatic. Yes. She's trying to convince all the people. That's right. And that they're all the... just like, why, Gladge? Why are you like this? There's a tempest in me. But yeah. instead, they're just having this whole conversation. She mentions a tempest. And Gladge was like, I've got a great line for that. <laughs> and, like, break down what information is actually being communicated in the lines. The Queen is asking, what authority do you have to demand an army from me? Mm. And her response is, I have feelings! <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> My wife just cracked how she can't hold it in. <laughs> but that's, that's how logical this dialogue is! <laughs> <laughs> she she ate some spicy burritos the night before. <laughs> what have been great? There is a tempest in me. So where is the privy? <laughs> I'll be back. But then she continues. It swept me to this island for a reason, and it will not be quelled by you, Regent. Okay. <clears throat> she didn't get swept there by a tempest. She got saved. Um, but before that, she jumped off a boat. Then she went on a wreck, <laughs> and she ditched the wreck, and then she went on another boat, and they took her here. And all the time, she was like, Oh, I'm a prisoner! Oh, what's happening? And even last episode with the whole, mm, the sea is always right, yada, 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 like... She was resisting tremendously yeah, so. she was like, to oh, just why am I here? yeet out of that place. She wanted a boat and everything! Give and me a boat, wouldn't get a boat, sneak out to try to think, and then she's trying to say there's something in her that swept her, forced her to that position when she's been taking every action to not be there. It's utter bullcrap. And usually when people appeal to some type of uh, purpose, like, like there's a reason for me being here, it's mm. like a higher power or something. No, she appeals to her own feelings. There's a tempest in me, and that is... A, so let me break it down, right? Um, so... Uh, Glad you're saying my inner tempest, her feelings, anger, led the, her there for a reason. Mm. And so she could have easily said something like, that tempest led me here for a reason, re referring to an outside greater power or something like that. But she's not appealing to a greater power. She's appealing to herself because it's like she knows what's better. But even that contradicts her actions because yeah. that tempest in you, Galadriel, was getting you to go the opposite direction. Now, my comment here was that I just feel like everything Gladwell says is damn right a lie <laughs> to get what she wants and try to look cool while doing it. But when you put her experiences up to what she's saying, it does mm. not match up. Yeah. Gosh, thank you so much for the large super chat. Look, 200, I think we need that. Thank you, that's very generous. We'll, we'll read this. Um, this is from Jack Burr for 200 US dollars. I love you guys and hope all is well. All is well, thank you, sir. I'm wishing I had a good question so I could learn something dope as usual, but unfortunately, I cannot think of one. So I guess this will have to suffice. How did you make uh, the map or Everfall like uh, it was... So like it was a program, or did you hire someone? God bless. I I made it in, in, in I made the, the map for Everfall, uh, and uh, I did it in Photoshop. Lots of Photoshop uh, magic and and and, th and things. Took a took a took a bit of work. Yeah, they've got map makers now. Oh yeah, there's a lot. Of there's cool lots things. of those out there, but yeah, mm. Photoshop, the good old class, mm. or not classic way, but. but wow, well, thank you very much for the generous <coughs> super chat, sir. Um, and, uh, sorry, uh, did you finish the... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, and then... Yeah, and so then, and then she just gets in the Queen's face and is like, and, and it will not be quelled by you, Regent. And I, when I heard that, I was like, pause and just throw this cow in jail. How, where does she get off speaking like that to a Queen? She's got, she was a, a castaway on a wreck. She's got no authority. Oh, what, Galadriel, Slayer of Orcs, who gives a crap with the way you're behaving? Mm. And then... She gets right in jail. And I was like, yes! <laughs> Celebrate! Get what you deserve! 
But then now she gets out, because obviously we know she does get out. That, I almost flipped I my fell lid. off my chair. Like, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there, we'll but get just, there. just know that this celebration uh, ends you, with disappointment. You cannot imprison Galadriel, and uh, and it's all and it was so pointless. Like, yeah, she wanted. It was, let's see. Okay, so there's that, and I was just like, they did it, throw in the dungeon, hilarious. And then Halbrand's just like, oh, why did you come in? Did you get beat up too? And she's like, nah, it's addition. Which implies that she knows all the things she says is not appropriate to say. She knows that she's gone too far. Mm -hmm. So every time she's rude or mean, she knows it. She's not just being naive or you know, doesn't understand manners. She knows she's being rude. Um, so it cuts to Isildur before it cuts back to a conversation between them, because there's a, there, what is it? But this, <laughs> so Isildur, he, he's hearing voices. He actually responds to the voice and looks towards it. And I get the feeling this show is so inept that they don't realise how blatantly real world they're making that whisper. They still mm. want it to make you feel like that this is just some in a kind of struggle he's having when they, it is so clear that it's a voice that is looking to the horizon and hearing, it's like a ghostly something. Mm. But I bet they won't follow up on it. No. Like it's they won't hills. explain it, it'll just be his feelings. It's the mountains. Okay, and so, yeah, he like, and literally it says, Isildur, Ooh, right? And then he, um, he lets uh, go of the thing because he's distracted and, uh, you know, everyone dives for it. And the captain guy, right, he comes down, explain yourself! And I was like, oh, there's a great explanation. The, the sea, the wind of the sea blew it out of your hands and it's always right. Yes. You can't argue with it. You're the one who said, you, you're like, you gotta, the, the sea's always sea right. Is always the wind, right. the wind did, of the sea did it. Can't, it's always right. But like, I even saw the sea um, say that Rings of Power sucks and it's always right, you know? Mm, mm. I can't I, I can't mean, even just before we're going into the shot, he says, You nearly made it. In a few more days, I'll have the pleasure of calling you all my shipmates. <laughs> so everyone gets a free pass. You aren't critiqued individually. Yeah. It's like, if everyone, if we just all make it on this boat, we'll be all good. But then mm. when this happens, he's just like, <laughs> You're fired! You're fired! You're fired! Like, <laughs> it wasn't even their fault! <laughs> I'm so like again contradicts yeah for a moment he's like you're all my friends you're doing a wonderful job and as soon as someone this guy up, stuffed up that got you all like you're all fired yeah and and that it's another one of those lines that is saying something that everyone would already know in context yeah who is this line for because the, the writers think you're idiots you need everything spelled out um, okay okay and then he's like um, it was my fault. Well, he says, I thought the sailmaster would only dismiss me, which means it was, it was it's intentional. It wasn't, yeah. He let go of it on purpose, knowing, like, to, it's like, dude, wh why did you need it? You just, just quit. You don't need to purposely stuff up, make yourself look like an idiot, put other people's lives potentially in danger or, or get them in trouble, which you did. Like, it's a, unbelievably dumb. And he, he, they all believe that this wasn't a mistake. He did it on purpose. Mm. Yep. Why? They don't answer it. They're just like, because uh, they want conflict. The reason why, they want him to be getting in uh, with, with his things. Again, this is number two. We got number two of uh, um, an artificial, uh, like that, something that they wanted, and they set it up with stupidity because they can't think of any natural, logical way to reach it normally. Yeah. And then they punch. And they're angry. And he walks away. My comment for this was just the conflict with these seamen. It's just unbearable. <sighs> and because one guy's like, <laughs> it's and then the other guy's like, no, guys, be friends. It's okay. And it's artificial conflict. Yeah, these characters don't matter. We already know he was going to leave the 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 recruitment. Yeah, you ach you've achieved nothing out of this. So there is so much pointless filler crap in this show. Another one. Case in point, you could have cut it and just have him like, you know, because there's a scene where she says, oh, did you leave? You were, uh, something like that. It's like, just have him say, yeah, I left. And you pick up from there, yeah. you know? But I don't even know where they're going with his whole arc of, I don't want to do it, and now I'm signing up with the arm or some weird crap. It's like, I have a feeling they're not even going to pay it off. They, they, they have these things where they supposedly are setting something up and then goes nowhere. Okay. Um, all right, so orcs. This scene freaked me out. 
It was like weird ASMR. Yeesh. It was very gentle with the <laughs> orc, and he touched the orc, and it was all very sensual. And I was like, "Yeah, what are you doing, Amazon?" Yeah. And like, look at look at the orcs, right? It's like they are conspicuously pale. Mm. Like, and not only their skin, everything, what, everything they're wearing, from even their weapons, like, like, uh, like the very silverness to you them. Only, they went way out of their way to make them. Pale all over, even the metal and the hides, pale. It's like, holy crap! Are you telling me we we don't put allegory into this? We we want to respect Tolkien's visions and stuff. And what's like, bull crap? <laughs> like, it's so on the nose. It's like through my skull. <laughs> Gosh, these uh, the agenda is on display. And we get more useless dialogue. Like, mm -hmm. we learn nothing from the dialogue. Yep. Only more questions. Mm -hmm. Everything that's asked, not clarified or clear or anything. Mm -hmm. And so the, we get to see a Adar, right? We learn nothing about him, apart yep. from that he's creepy with orcs. Yep. And at this point, the show would have been better if you kept the mystery. Yeah. Like, have a better reveal or something like that. The reveal is him, Mercy, killing some injured orc, looking sad about it. Uh, Great. Okay. Well, yeah, what? What? What do you want us to think about the character? I don't know. Gosh. And so, I don't, yeah, no idea what the purpose of that interaction was. And then he sends him off. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. So then he talks to um, uh, the uh, discount Legolas, and he's like, What are you? Not who are you, but what are you? He's like, Sauron misdirect, which, trust me. All pretense is gone. There's a reason why the thumbnail is the reason. We'll get there. And when we get there, yeah, no no bother to keep up appearances anymore because the show tells you. It's very clear. Um, okay, so then he's like, I want you to deliver a message. And it's cliche dialogue message. So I say, I want you to deliver a message. What message? Cut away. <laughs> and, and so I have what is like, I wrote, let me guess, surrender or die. That's it. That's exactly what it is, uh, with a few more flowery words thrown in. But it's that surrender, or it's like it's so cliche and predictable. Uh, it's, it's like this doesn't build suspense. I know exactly what the message is. Wouldn't it be great if it was some better message, like something yeah. that was unique or interesting, or, or something like that? But no, it's it's the most bland, cliche villain message you could get. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh boy, we get to something amazing. So there's this conversation, and then the, 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 the people, the, the mm. villagers, right? They're, they're at the tower where the elves are at, okay? They're all going into... Can I just put something out as well? Yes, if you about, Okay. Everyone else here wearing grey, dirty clothes, no one's washed. She's wearing blue, pristine. You clean. are right. Everyone, like... And you'll see it throughout the, the she's episode got as well. A little bit of mud, I think. A little bit, but, but like. But yeah, you're right. She's, she's, she's standing out. Obviously, bathed very recently. Everyone else yeah, looks. Look, like, look at her. Yeah. Like, look at these people here compared to her. Like. These are not the, the same. They, they do not. <laughs> one does not look like the others. No. My goodness. Oh, you are right, sir. So they're here, right? And <clears throat> turns out, turns out, they have a bit of a problem. It's so dumb and breaking my head, right? They have no food. They got, what, four potatoes there? But that was specifically from the stores of this place, which you would have assumed would have been cleared out anyway because the elves abandoned them. They literally brought no food at all. Not a single person brought a scrap. That is all caps later down when they go back. <laughs> when they go back and get food... And it turns out there's heaps of food in the village still. No one bothered. It's not that they didn't have any. It's that no one thought to bring food. They just went... <laughs> the most basic necessity. Where it dropped everything and just walked out of town. <laughs> like... When they did that, I was like... What? <laughs> Are you kidding me? And again... 
again. Like, there's no even attempt to try and validate this, like, oh, poor Winter, we didn't have food, we had to leave so fast or anything like that. But Orcs. even if you're leaving fast, grab a couple of apples or something. Orcs were attacking if you had a, a whole wave of orcs, you had to get out there because they were raining it. That would make, make sense. But no one was attacking it. No, they killed an orc. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, okay, we better leave. <laughs> Don't finish that ale. No, put it down, we're out. And... <laughs> The reason, the reason why they did this is so painfully clear. It's to justify what they want to happen next. Because what happens next? The son, the boy, goes to get food from the village because they have no food. And that makes him run into orcs and everything in the episode happens because of this astoundingly retarded moment. Are you kidding me? No one brought any food. You astronomical numbskulls who come off it, right? But no, it's forced to get that. And, and they lack the ability. Like, it's so easy to come up with the most basic reason to try and justify the boy sneaking off to get something. Yeah. It doesn't even need to be food. It could be any number of things. He could have forgotten the sword, the hilt. That could've could have been one. Like, and sometimes it can be as lame but cheap and easy as the, he forgot, I don't know, some picture of his dad or something like that, you know? And they do that pretty easy. Like, uh, for some reason, I'm just thought of um, the opening of Narnia where, you know, they have to run to the bunker and uh, and the child, the boy, uh, has yep. to run back to get the picture of dad. And he and the bombs land and things break and stuff. Yeah, like, it's a, so it's such an easy setup to do, yeah. to just think of anything to justify someone running into a dangerous situation because for them it's more important. But instead, they decided... Everyone is unbelievably stupid and they just didn't bring the mountains of food that was in the village that they could have taken with them. So I'm speechless. And so we are up to three unbelievably stupid setups to push the episode where the people that they want. And what's hilarious about this, so little was achieved in the arc of the boy. He leaves and then he deus ex machina gets saved. That's the other moment that they want. They wanted a save moment, but then there is the one of the most stupid moments in the show as well that this arc ends on. And then they get back to the thing. <laughs> they could have just had discount, like, let's rock up and say, I've got a message and skip it all. Yep. Oh, but you also find out what the orcs are looking for, and it's the exact thing I predicted uh, in our episode two review. I was like, oh, they're looking for the sword thing. It's so... Again, did I mention that this is painfully predictable? It's... Uh, there is nothing that's like... Something happens that you weren't expecting. It's just so obvious. So, yeah, yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> also, somehow, in like, because I think she said there's more than one village in here. There's yeah, yeah, there's, there's like, scattered people. She's the only leader. It seems like that. Yeah, well, no one. Is, there, there's, there's is no, there a mayor or no mayors, council? No leaders. No politic, like political yeah. people. It's just her. Everyone else, peasant farmers. No wise man. Mm. No wise woman. It's just the healer. <laughs> yeah. And oh, one of the solutions for food is forage and hunt. And I'm like, do you see how many people are in this thing? <laughs> You can spend all day foraging and get enough food for one person, right? And it doesn't have a lot of calories. I've been watching Alone recently. It's a good show. Um, but one of the things, like, getting food out in the wilderness is hard and hard work. It's just like, we'll try and forage. It's like, oh, by the way, foraging. Foraging. What do you have to do to forage? you got to forage. you got to go out and, and, and travel across the landscape to forage when you're literally trying to hunker behind defensive walls for a siege. Like, mm. And then she's like, it's too dangerous for the sun to go back and get food, but then they'll leave to get food anyway when they forage. You stupid morons! Gosh, gosh. It's unbelievably dumb. Also, those two, I think, are an awful duo. Yeah, no It does not work mm -hmm. at all. Yep, yep. And there's like a line, I forget what the boys said, but it was something like, you know, I'm sick of doing nothing or something like that. It yeah. Just forced, like, I'm an angsty teen. Okay, so, anyway, he's like, he goes back into the um, tower, and the very next scene, he's out of the tower. Yep. I'm, I'm just like... He went the opposite direction. Was, was anyone watching the walls? I mean, 
you're afraid of an orc attack. You'd think people would be watching pretty carefully <laughs> for people who come and leave. And in actual fact, if we go back far enough, we see that this is like, there's, there's like one approach and, uh, you know, escape from this. Yeah. Like a bridge. Otherwise, there's a, a fall down the other side. There's a big lake. So he would have had to have crossed the bridge and no one saw him. He's just yeet gone. <laughs> this is what I mean. This show is so bad. Oh my goodness. Anyway, so they, they need to, you know, hang a lantern on something. So they show him tuck the sword behind his shirt. And the sword's like bulbous, it's big. But then you literally see the shirt just like hanging down on his body and nothing there. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah. And there's dead animals as well, but maybe the animals you could cook up for food. How long are they dead? But yeah. they have flies, but still flies would have cut. I mean, they they all look pretty gross. Maybe, but still, if it's only been a, like a day or so. I mean, if there was a cow that good. had black milk. Like, their, their throats have been cut. I mean, there was one where it's just a cow's head. But anyway, there's plenty of other food in the village, I guess. Yeah, so yeah. They're not, there they're was not really, so much they're, they're not strapped for options. There's no. food everywhere. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah, so... They go in and, uh, you know, they got food. He wants to check the other building. The tavern bar tavern. thing. But, oh yeah, oh, well, sorry, there's a decapitated cow. Um, he gets food, he's picking up, and then he, the boy walks away and is confronted by an orcs. And, a, 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 like, as soon as you see him walk into the building, you're like, he's going to run into orcs. Yeah. Predictable. It's, predict it's pre so predictable. Um... And anyway, so there's a, a slight tussle. He gets the sword out and he stabs himself and the sword reforms again. And he's like, I thought it already reformed, but I guess it I goes it needs, back. It co needs constant, like, yeah. it's like a blood turn on lightsaber <laughs> thing. <laughs> but the York's like, you've got it! And it's like, eh, it's obvious that that's what they were looking for. Um, and then... <sighs> Also, going to say, what a jerk friend who mm. your other friend goes into a tavern to get stuff, door closes, and you're just like, all right, I'm going to leave him now. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even knock on the door and say, hey, I'm going to go. Hey, are you okay? Yeah. None of that. He just yeets off. He's gone. So he runs outside a door, right? And so the orc looks, chases after him. He opens it, you know, he's running, 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 and the scene is this. When you go outside, it's like... Okay, he's gone outside and suddenly he's nowhere to be seen. Where could he be? There's a well right in front of me. Up the tree. But, no, he's not, he's not in there. Oh, you can't see him? He's not in there, he's not in there. He'll... <laughs> and so, it's going in like, where could he have gone, the orc? He's like, this is such a high stealth manoeuvre. And it zooms in, it's like... He has yeah. level 100 sneak. I, I, I know the orcs are dumb, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> and then he doesn't have the sword anymore. No. So, like, but we find out where the sword was. He, like, later on, he goes and he picks up an entire sack of grain and is like, he, he's just grabbing food. He, he hid the sword in it. At what moment in time did he have to hide the sword between running out of here? There was no time <laughs> to do that. But it's magically in a sack of wheat hidden. Perfectly and away. The orc would be more focused on the sword than the kid. So if the kid dropped the sword and ran out, yeah. the orc would just go to the sword instead. So the timing just like you're trying to tell me he hit it in that really quick that sh bull crap show. Don't give me this. Oh my goodness. And then the orc, right? He hears a voice from the well, <laughs> and is like, "Oh, I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him." <clears throat> It's like, and he's, oh, there's just water in here. He, sure, he wouldn't be able to be hiding anywhere else in this well filled with water. Surely not. And he just leaves. I mean, I know orcs are stupid, but come on. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, so he leaves and then the boat. What I found down though, because doesn't he get his head hit by the... Bucket? That's why he goes, ah. Oh, at one point, when, or was that later? No, I think it was. Because he, it? yeah, he gets, so the orc drinks, Bucket oh, gets the, hit. Is that right? The thing that I found dumb, right, 
was that the orc hears him go, oh, yeah, at the same time with a loud <laughs> fucking bang, okay? But then later, he goes, oh, I thought I heard a kid. Oh, no, nothing. Walks away for two seconds. Kid comes out. Ah, 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 ah. You don't think you would have heard that? The water rushing, the kid breathing. Uh, but he heard yeah, the kid's I, noise at the same time as the bucket. You're right. He's not exactly silent when he comes out. He's just like. Oh, oh, oh. And the orc is just over there. Yeah. You would even hear the water swashing yes. a bit. God. Again, the inconsistencies are so consistent. Oh. And it is a very high water level. It is. It's a very high... Well, if you didn't hear it, it's a very high water level for a... Um, a well. A well. And so, seeing it, and like, the elves, they're just... They're so ethereal and so graceful that they can't even make scaffolding without making it artistic. It's like, look, I get elves are fancy, but they're going to make a like a, a artistic scaffolding for build... Really? I oh, like... No. It's just You're gonna be practical for that. Yeah, they're like, come on, guys. Also, the elves are just working with the dwarves now. I know. We just like that happened out of nowhere. Yeah, great, uh, fantastic. I... Conflict over. <laughs> no more need to talk about the dwarves. Or what are they doing? Remember how they set up conflicts and then give no payoff no. and just like they're working. It's all good. So before the setup was like. They're wanting something. Well, we can't make do anything because they might find out a big deal. And by the, <laughs> the, the secret that they're so desperate to hide... They don't. ...doesn't mean spit in the end. They, but they're like in episode two or three, whatever. They're so desperate to keep this secret. Can't let anything... And and now they have the, the agreement. It's, it's like that wasn't a problem at all, yeah. apparently. And it's suddenly really high. Yeah, I know. How and much they... time has passed? Holy crap! Glad you was a... Holy crap! It's only supposed to be three days since Glacier arrived at Numenor! <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> and if you're wondering about the time frame, this isn't like, you know, several months have passed in this arc of the show and only three days in a thing. We get a time frame of Galadriel and and Elrond, who's in this scene, right, together at the Elven place when she leaves on the boat, right? And then the boat Magically got to, like, the elven land in however, like, seemed quick, but then you could maybe justify that some time had passed. But guess what? Elrond is now with Gilgalad, and they haven't started the construction yet. They haven't even met the dwarves. No. Glad you falls off the boat, gets picked up. She could only be stranded for a couple of days at most, right? Again, they haven't even constructed anything. And then she lands in Numenor, and the chronology is set up exactly like that. And then... What? Half <laughs> a building done, ready. <laughs> oh my goodness! They're not paying attention to anything. No. I. Oh. They haven't even written out the timeline for the show. Gosh. Yeah. Well, and so Gilgalad is like, Durin, he's avoiding me. I think he's hiding something. So you have any notes for this part? Oh, yeah, they have this conversation, but then he's like, your your father said that your future will be in my hands. Or, your, no, my future will be in your hands. i just forgotten about that until this very moment. <laughs> Isn't that convenient for this conversation we're having? Like, and, and, and for the fact that Durin has issues with his dad later on, it's like, yeah. they, they really didn't just have Gilgalad suddenly recall something that he hadn't recalled in any other moment in time. But conveniently it does it now setting up Elrond to be able to talk about his relationship with his father to Durin. That's uh, number four of a stupid thing that they do to uh, try and justify something else. <sighs> and anyway, it's also like, um, uh, you know, uh, the dwarves, uh, they, they're avoiding me. And I'm like, is Durin with the elves? Apparently, well, not. But, when, but Elrond goes back to the dwarves. Yeah, it's yeah. like he's never left. He's still yeah. mining there. Yeah. And it's still distrustful. But somehow the dwarves are over here, also constructing yeah. buildings and, so and doing stuff. It's like, what, you're telling me Durin's been going back and forth, back and forth? And it's well, a, they go back and forth like an instant. I know, well. and it's supposed to only be a couple of days. And we see the map, like, it is at least a day or two's journey. Where oh. they keep just rocking up at the front door going, oh, yeah, what's up, guys? Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. So I was like... Uh, yeah, well, I thought they wanted to hide the mithril, but I guess not. I guess not. Um, and uh, then it cuts to Sir Elrond. He's there, and then he just 
teleports, yep. he's at the dwarves again. Yep, he's with Deesa, and they're just having a good, good old chat. Good old conversation, like he never left. Yeah. I wonder if those scenes were actually filmed, like... Like that scene with Gilgalad was filmed with the thought that oh, this is clearly months later on, yeah. and this film, this scene was filmed with the chronology that he's he still had, there, yeah, hasn't yeah, left. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> it really feels like that. And then they just mishmash forth like, oh, the conversation he has with Durin about his father. We need to trust uh, this conversation about <laughs> take that. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's an editing hack job by the look of it. Um. And so, so Deezer, her voice is grating in, in this episode. Mm. Like it, it, so I, it's a bit hard to listen to. Um, okay, then we have the initial conversation. Do you have any notes? I don't want to skip over your oh, just hopeless the, notes that you have. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, just that um, Elrond just goes to Deezer because no one else to talk about Duran to him. Uh, uh, and then my comment is just all caps, like, he travelled how many days to go back to Deza? It's like, so Duran, what's up with him? Yeah. And my best bud I haven't seen in 20 years, he hasn't been talking to me still. He's been yeah. a bit bit offish about it all. And interesting thing, right, is the previous scene, you actually, the, the writers think that, you know, you have to, you didn't, they didn't need to set up this conversation with, about Elrond's dad in the previous scene no. to have Elrond speak about his dad to Durin later on. And this scene brings up that Durin is acting suspiciously, so you didn't need the previous scene to set up no. that there was a suspicious... You could have cut the entire thing yep. and saved yourself from the massive chronolo chronology blunder that this that scene sets up because the, now the tower's already well underway, like it's been worked on for a month, uh, several months, and it would have been better. Uh, redundant... This is the funny thing, because not only is it filler crap, it actually makes the show worse by having it in there. You would improve the show by cutting all this fat. Mm. Um, sorry, yeah, you have... Well, just when they're talking together, uh, mm. he says, you know, Deesa, there's no secret worth concealing with I, deception. I'll get there. I've okay. got... I've, like, that's my next point. Yeah, I actually, you, we're up to that because, yeah, so he keeps putting me off and that's that's where I was like, they set up the suspicion of him doing something. Yeah, so, go, go Nathan. Oh, just, <laughs> there is... There is no secret worth concealing with deception. <laughs> Do they know what a secret is? Do they know what the definition of deception is? <laughs> you could say the show was a secret. <laughs> worth concealing with deception. Like, I was like, hang on, hang on, hang on. Am I taking stupid pills? I need to double check. So just, like, I double checked the definition of deceive, right? Mm. And it's to conceal the truth. Something that when you do with a secret, it's almost like you can't keep a secret without deception. <laughs> but how right, it's like, there's no secret worth concealing with deception, which is basically saying... There's no secret, have a secret. Yeah, there's no secret worth ever having to be a secret. <laughs> But also just that comment, like, the way he just talks to Deesa, like, you know, calling her out, saying, you're lying to me. These elves are so stuck up when they want really something. Are. They're always just like, they're, they're so high and mighty. Yep. And, and they're just, oh, they're such... And Elrond lies through his teeth. He's already lied massively when he's like, I came here to see my good friend. Yeah. No, well, you, no you came here because you wanted something. Like, Durin was absolutely right. He said, you only came here because you wanted something. Yeah, you're right. And then he lies. And then he lies through his teeth again uh, a bit later on. Um, and just another really weird line where Deza, she says, calling a dwarf disorder... I can't do it, I said, in her own home is a recipe for strong gravy. Because hmm. <laughs> she's a cook. That is as dumb as the a dog can mark, bark at the moon, but he can't help but he get down. And it's like, recipe for strong... Like, I like strong gravy. It's like, this is an analogy that's working well to try and say that, you know, it, it's causing something bad to happen. It's like, it's a recipe for strong gravy. Oh. <laughs> it's a terrible analogy. They just... And again, it's like they want to be Tolkienian and it's mm. like, oh, we'll make up these great analogies and they just fall flat. Ah, oh, yeah. And then, so they want Elrond. He's so clever, right? Deza says, Durin's gone to um, mine, mine, mine yeah. at, a thing, at a place. And there's like, he's so perceptive. This, this Elrond is like, why did he not take his favourite chiselling hammer of his, uh, of his mining courts? And a journey, uh, the journey takes like, you know... Two days or something. Two down. days in the mines to reach. 
And they're like, it's like, all right, you're setting up to try and make you so perceptive. But then what really got me was Deezer's answers is like, oh, no, Duran, he can do it in two hours. And I'm like, yeah, hang on. That's it. Look, I, 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 dwarves can climb. Holy crap! Two days to two hours? What? <laughs> also, they're shorter than elves. Like, I yeah. they maybe have a better footing or, or sp- speed. But like, elves are tall and lanky. They would be able to do that like two yeah. two hours from two days. Yeah. And the whole s- <laughs> the whole setup of Elrond being smart. He didn't take his chiseling hammer. Yeah, he's using one on site. He didn't want to carry it all the way this time. I mean, this isn't a really, like, big brain thing, Elrond. And then, Deezer's, uh, like I said, her answers are just, what, really? Yeah. Uh, okay. And so, um... I remember also the, the children are making this rhyme, which Elrond will use later, conveniently. Is that what he... Yeah. No! Yeah. No! Yeah. <laughs> Because I always flipped a lid, but now I'm doing it in a different way. Of where he came, I thought it was just some rhyme. I don't know, you heard no, from dwarves or dwarves. The rhyme he hears is from the, the kids. kids here. <laughs> you would think these would be like, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> The password to open the secret door, I'm going to teach my kids in a rhyme. And it's like, good. oh. It's like my, me telling my kids the code to my bank account. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Wait, but guess what? Guess what? It's another stupid thing that they put in the show to justify something else because they didn't have the talent or intelligence or creativity to find a reasonable, logical explanation for Elrond to figure out how to open the door. He heard the kids say it because he needed to know it for the story. Number five. Did I tell you that this show is built up on stupidity? Okay. Case in point, the fifth example of an astronomically stupid thing to justify what they want in the story because they can't come up with anything better. Oh, my goodness. This is hurting my head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, gosh. So, yeah, yeah. So this is... I have a bit of a reaction. Mm. So she says, Durin is away in this far-off mine, okay? And the very next scene, she is walking with him out in the open for everyone to see. And I was like... <laughs> well, I literally wrote before they gave anything. I was like, gee, I wonder why they would do something so stupid. Um, uh, and then I wrote, if they show Elrond watching them, they are predictable <laughs> retards. And guess who's watching? <laughs> like, I, like, I literally have it written here. Because, <laughs> of course, Elrond is watching. <laughs> that bit, okay, it was... I want to show a few seconds of this just how obscurely weird they shot this as well. But there's a thing that Duran says to Deezer as well. He says, uh, Lucky my future queen can convince a water rat to wear a mink coat. <laughs> Again, another a word line that no one understands or gets. Just give up, writers. You can't do Tolkien. Like. <laughs> anyway, so this is all happening. And then it... It, so it, it literally zooms out. Zooms out. Because he's got elven binocular vision. He has, but look, uh, that I'm okay with. He's got supervision, okay? You said not that have that. But still, the fact that they try to keep a secret... And he's just walking out in the open. In the middle where everyone can hear. Everyone. It's like, all Elrond had to do is like, so, to any one of these randoms, hey, have you seen Duran? Yeah, oh, he was just on the bridge a minute ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so dumb. And, and then, then that was, oh, this is so weird. Just the way they shoot this, everyone. Just look, look at this. <laughs> like, it, it pans down to his mouth. And then he goes, rum, 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 rum. like, because he, like his, he can lip read and knows what they were saying with his elven eyes. Oh, <laughs> and Make me uncomfortable. So, so you, so another thing, right? They just they had Jurun walking out on a bridge in the open when he's trying to be hiding to not know what Elrond is like. So dumb for someone who's trying to be hiding, right? To justify Elrond figuring out where they're mining. Mm. Again, something incredibly dumb to push the story with. That's number six. 
Also, the episode. fact that Deza says, yeah, I, I saw him out. He's not here. You're fine. <laughs> and then he just came back inside. <laughs> All right, see you later. Have a good one. Walked for like five minutes, walked back, came back inside and just sat there, waited for him to like appear. Like, <laughs> it's absurd. Also, and look, I, I get elves have higher senses, but I don't believe that Elrond would have heard them well, say anything. I think he's lip reading. Lip reading because if, but still, if he actually heard. Yeah, come off it. Come there's waterfalls it. around, it's a far off yeah. distance. <laughs> oh, it was and, just... and so, like, as I mentioned, I literally wrote if they show Elrond watching them, they're predictable idiots, yeah. then they do. And I was just like, of course! Of course you did! Come on! I was like, all right, holy crap, this is dumb, contrived, predictable garbage. <laughs> and at this point, my notes, I wrote, this show is progressing slower than my 90s internet connection. Yeah. <laughs> what have we achieved in this? We are nearly halfway. <laughs> and nothing has happened. <laughs> I mean... After four episodes. Like... I didn't think Rings of Power would impress me, but I have to say, now it has. I did not think it would be this impressively bad. Like, so condensedly bad, with so much poor writing, poor directing, poor setup and payoff, poor character work. Like, it's so bad! Wow! This is, that, it's so bad it's an achievement, and it's not a good bad like The Room, it's painfully bad. Like, this is, no redeeming qualities bad, except for pretty pictures, but yeah, I, oh my goodness. So then, Elrond's like, oh, I'll just go on my way, and it's, it's down there. And then, yeah, the scene where he, like, he saw footprints on the, in the dirt, dust. He heard the draft, like Gladriel did in the first one. <laughs> Elves are really good at finding solid secret passages, whether it's a, an ice wall or whether it's a okay, so door fall. This scene is baffling, and now it's baffling in a new way. First, I was like, he just picked some random phrase and, and knew the password? Like, don't give me that crap. And now you're telling me it's what the children... How does he know that? Where would he, in what realm would he think that would work? Does he even know that dwarves have secret doors that open to spoken words? I mean, come It would make more it. sense if he tried to sing to it. <laughs> Did some Deezer. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Like, I mean, that would make more sense than... Uh, yeah. Like, like, it's so much more stupid than what could have been. It could have just been a secret button or latch or lever or something that he just feels around and uses his elven eyes to be able to look super close and see a seam or something mm. like that. At least that's justified. Instead, they opted for contrived bullcrap. He felt a wall, set a rhyme, and he did it. He did it. We don't know how, but he did it. And not only that, it's specific. He, like, knocks several... And he, he, like, how does he know that he needs to knock at the same time as he speaks it? Where is he getting this from? He just knows magically? It's not the first time characters have just pull, bull, sorry, pulled bullcrap knowledge out of the ether, which is the exact thing that they need to know. Oh, but this is, this is like a new level. This is like, what? It's like someone literally going to a vault. And he's like, hmm. Just like, oh my goodness. Ish. And then, yeah, it opens. He walks through. And the, so the dwarves are mining for mithril. Mm -hmm. The dwarves are mining for mithril. Why aren't they mining this mithril? That's much closer to the door in an area that's not dangerous. I honestly <laughs> cannot explain to you, Shad, why. There is a reason why. It's so Elrin can discover the mithril. They will so a sensible reason. Yes, exactly a sensible reason. <laughs> because the purpose of this is that they want Elrond to see a vein of mithril and ask what it is. But to do that, there needs to be a vein of mithril that he comes across. Yeah. And so they will break logic. If the dwarves are mining mithril and it's so hard to get to, they would have cleaned out every scrap of it that is closer to the entrance than deeper in, right? But because Elrond needs to see it, we'll just realize that this was say they left this one, right? Yeah. Again, something astronomically stupid to justify what they want to happen in the story because they can't think of any other logical, reasonable reason 
to justify Elrond having a question about what they're mining for or seeing a mythical something or something like that. I mean, what if he even made more sense if he came across, like, I don't know, a cart full of ore that they mined and there's veins of mithril in the ore? Mm. That makes sense! But to say that dwarves just ignored this really valuable vein of mithril that's right near the front door and they go deeper in to an area where there's literally a cave-in because it's so dangerous... Gosh. Again... It's just to, just to justify what they want, and that's number seven. We're up to number seven in the stupid things in this ep. Did I say there was a lot when I started? There's when quite started? a few. Oh, my goodness. So that's number seven. So, Durin arrives. You've, you're, you've come to spy on me. I can't do the accent. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Spy on me, uh, elf, elf, Scotland. Elf. They do. Scot You've come to spy on me. I can't do it. I'm giving up. Give it up. Um, and then Elrond's like, hardly. And I'm like, <laughs> Elrond, that's exactly what you're doing. <laughs> you lying jerk. Like, what else did you <laughs> Hardly. I'm not sneaking into this secret thing and I was literally spying on you with my eyes. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not spying. <laughs> Dude, stop being a silly dwarf. Of course I'm not doing that. I'm your friend. Oh, Elrond is so two-faced in this show. It's amazing. That's... And then and it's like, I care nothing for what is in this chamber. Then why did you bother to find out? <laughs> this... Could have just waited around for the two hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Just, when he's like, I do care for you in this friendship. No, you don't. You've all went to his wife and he's like, where is he? Where's Durin? Tell me where he is. And they go, find Durin. And he's like, Durin, why are you here? What's going on? He does not care about the friendship. Has no <laughs> account for manners or being a decent elf. Like, he, yeah. he just lies through his teeth. But he's like, oh, I'm not spying on you. Even though I did spy on you before with your wife and you were yeah. crossing the bridge. <laughs> and the thing is, Elrond, he sees his vein. He generally has no idea what it is. And so the secret is not revealed. Yeah. Durin, he can just tell him to piss off and he wouldn't be any the wiser. Yeah. Problem solved. He's like, I'm working. Yeah, I'm working. Oh, wait, I, I get lost. I'm making something for my wife. Like, you know, yeah. It's a surprise. You're ruining it. Get out of here. Right? Any number of reasonable excuses. That is the best excuse. Yeah. It's like, it's why I'm being, like, I haven't seen you in a while and I've been off. I'm making something for my wife. None of your business, elf. Get lost. But instead it's like, oh, now you discovered I'll have to... Ah, uh, damn it, I have to reveal everything to you. And me. I'm like, you had this... This secret was really important. That like all the reasons that made you want to keep the secret should technically still be in place. But now I was like, oh, oh you're my friend, I'll tell you. Oh, don't give me that. Bull crap, and then um, he he gets Elrond to swear an oath, swear mm. an oath that he will not tell anyone. <laughs> it's contradicting a bit later uh, because uh, he gives El ends up giving Elrond a piece of mithril, and if he really wanted it, the no chance of that you know secret going out, I think giving him a chunk of mithril might be the worst thing you could do. But friendship, sign of our friendship, he says, and so. There's no purpose for this oath, but Elrond's response is baffling. It's like, it's just saying, I, I promise I won't tell anyone. Anything you tell me here will end in my ears alone. And I'm like, that could be interpreted a couple of more ominous ways. Anything I hear now, I will end. It'll end in my ears. And like, it's, I don't know, it's poor wording. Mm. Okay, again, they're trying to be Tolkienian, flowery. Okay, okay. And then we get to find out why it's um, a secret. This was baffling. Okay, so anyway, he makes the oath. Oath made, shows it. Elrond basically asks why the secrecy. And the only answer Durin gives, and this is just... What? He says, it's perilous to mine. That's the only answer he gives. And, like... Are you kidding? That's not cause to keep it a secret. What? What? And what's hilarious is Elrond, he like nods like, oh, yes, yeah. so I'm going to put subtitles on because maybe we'll get some. Uh... Yeah, so he, literally, why all the secrecy? Um, and the answer, yeah, yeah. why not celebrate this? Makes Seems sense. Like a question. Is magical ore that's stronger than steel, light and amazing and everything? And uh, ready? It's like, he's like, he's, he's reluctant. He's like, 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him this big secret. He, it's perilous to mine? And look at Elrond's reaction here. Elrond. Oh. <laughs> like, hang on, are you understanding something that I'm not, Elrond? Because yes, that's dangerous. Mining <laughs> is dangerous, yes. Would make sense, yes, being in mines and all. <laughs> and that's the answer. That's legitimately the answer they give. Do these people... <laughs> They have a tumor or something. Like, what's going on with their brain to think that that? Like, and it's not hard to think of answers. Like, dwarves are greedy. They don't want to share it. It's like that could be like we don't want you elves to have it. You know, yeah. you've been lording it over us. This is a you know thing that could help us. Thing. Even a better answer. What if Durin is actually responsible and is not so hung up? With it? But dwarves are is like, we don't want our whole people to know about this. It's rare. It's hard to mine. If we let it out. Every single dwarf in uh, in Kazadum will come and try and get their hands on it. Mm. It could lead to a civil war. You know, it's more precious than gold. Yeah. Dwarves are love. They love precious things. We've had peace like, for a long time now. We don't want to like, like disturb it. Wouldn't that be an interesting story? Like, like they're literally afraid of the greed of their own people. That they could go nuts for this insanely valuable but rare thing, mm. right? And that could also set up if they did it. They don't. But it's not hard to come up with just valid reasons to explain this. And then he could be like, and that actually is a very serious thing. Like, Aaron, you can't let anyone know about this. We, we need to keep this under wraps until we can control it and its distribution or figure out something, okay? And that could then justify perhaps the dwarves digging too deeply and too greedy because their entire people just dive down and start cra going crazy for it. And that's, that's a good reason for the secret. None of that. They do not have the creativity to come up with something as basic and simple as that. And... Uh, and then the reason it's perilous to mine. And that's it. And that's it. That's, it. that's the whole thing. Then they talk about, you know, um, uh, what could lead to a new era of strength and prosperity. And like, well, you guys are doing pretty good at the moment. It's like you're in your golden age already. Mm. Um, and then there was, there's, there's this line that Elrond says, um, uh, something about uh, the reason why he came. So, yeah, so... Uh, um, Durin says, ah, so you didn't come here because of your people or something like that. And then he says, uh, I came because 20 years is far too long to stay away. <laughs> no, you didn't. He's <laughs> lying again. I'm just baffled. That, like, he says that, and then Durin's like, oh, you best bud. You hit my soft oh, spot. I know. Here, have some. <laughs> have some of the secret ore I don't want anyone to discover or know about. He gives him a piece. Like, manipulates him. It's, it's, yeah. And it was like, like this super secret thing that again now the secret doesn't matter. Also, this thing is like they say could be dearer than gold, mm. and he's given a big fat chunk of it. Yeah, like that's given your like mm. I mean, a, I don't, a, a car, mm. uh, uh, something yeah. big and expensive. The whole big thing about this secret is just forgotten now. Doesn't yep. matter. It's thrown into the wind. It won't probably come up again. Again, remember how I said the show sets up things and they don't pay it off and they just will forget about it and move on? Here's another one, all right? Uh, I'd like to be wrong. I'd like them to pay something off, but the reasoning for the secret is so dumb, they're just going to try and move on for about to save embarrassment from by now, I think. Um, and then uh, there's a cave-in um, uh, because it's perilous to mine and it cuts to this. So, boring. What's the point of the scene? Don't like, bore me. Put me to sleep. This character is important. Is she's she's doing stuff. Like, I was... I... Mm. Uh. Funnily enough, as pointless as it is, this is the one scene that had a line that was at least half decent, mm -hmm. but it feels stolen. Like, they, like it seems yeah, like okay. a, a line that's... He says, um... She says, I'm not in the habit of going off with strange young men. And he responds, very wise. If I see any, I'll be sure to point them out. I'm like, oh, there's a little bit of wit there. I knew you'd like that joke. Why? I, I, knew, I knew you'd I like, like that I like cheesy line. jokes. I, I saw that and I'm like, ugh, Shad's <laughs> going to like that one, isn't he? <laughs> Why, oh, you, you didn't? No, I was like, <laughs> she's like saying no. And it's like, it's all right. Still, I know. Still okay. The reality is he is still a strange person yeah, that she doesn't yeah. know very well. And that like, line doesn't. Right. 
doesn't change it, but that seems to placate her. She goes off with him. Um, so I'll oh, great. There's stupidity, but there was some there was some wordplay in there that. Yes. But it feels stolen. Like I'm sure I've heard another rephrasing of that before somewhere. Also, I feel like she would know him if if her dad is the the guy, mm-hmm. the big popular guy. You'd think that she would probably know who his yeah, son is. Yeah, yeah, you'd think so. Apparently not though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's just being clever. He's such a clever... <laughs> mm, I just can't believe she's smart at that. She found it endearing. Okay, okay. So, this is... This This scene is just... That's why we come here, folks. For scenes like this. So... He basically says, Oh, so your plan didn't work. You're like, a, you know, bullheadedly doing everything. You're like mm. a colt in full gallop or something. She's pacing back and forth. So even when she's quiet, she's still annoying. Because you hear, clop, 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 Man, if I was in a prison cell with her, I'd just be like, ah, I'd go insane. It's like, has it ever occurred to you that you're not battling trolls or orcs? And, okay, so the context is that, oh, sorry, but anyway, it was actually previous to that. It's like, who are you to lecture me in battle or something like that? And, like, he's not lecturing you in battle, Galadriel. He's trying to say that your interactions with people come what make you come as a complete condescending cow, and it clearly isn't working. But what's baffling is, like, the show seems to know that she's extremely yeah. unlikable. Yeah, because he points it out. He po- and so he points out every single time she was unbearable to anyone else. That means, like... How did you think we would like this, your main character, if you know she's obnoxious and horrible? Okay. And, and if they're trying to say this is the arc, that she'll learn to be uh, humble and everything like that. She doesn't in this episode, and this was her trying to understand other people and everything, mm. when, no, she was just right all along because fate and magic told everyone that she was right with the pedals and everything. Yep. So, if anything, this is just confirming that Gladriel, you're never wrong. Everyone should just listen to you always. Keep on going being the cow you are. So, then, all right, this is, this is, this is the part where he says, like, you know, um, uh, okay. So, it's a, he says you need to learn what their fears are. So, let's, let's just... We want to get the lines because uh, so she's like, go on. And, and in instances like this, it seems to me that you do well to identify what it is that your opponent's f- most fears. And I'm like, not necessarily, but I might be able to see someone, you know, who thinks that. And then she's like, goes, ready? And she's like, to exploit it? To exploit the fears? And then I was like, well, she jumped on that pretty quickly. And she's kind of excited about it because oh, ex- exploit, them. exploit them. I can do that. I can be a bad person. It's like that's not that technically always sound doctrine because if people are afraid of something, that also could mean that they're more fortified against it to try and be prepared against it's any true, yeah. any vulnerabilities in their fears. This isn't like find their weaknesses and then you could exploit their weaknesses because they're always weaknesses. But they no, they exploit their fears and it's like it's like fears aren't necessarily always weaknesses. But anyway. There's that. And here, here it is. Here it is. This is, this is where all pretense is gone. Give them a means of mastering it. Give them, give them something. Give them a means to master it so that you can master them. That's what uh, Halbrand says. And at this point, I'm like, oh, uh, all right, we're done. We're all done. Right, cool, we know. Thank you, Sauron. The, but, like, oh, look, no, all pretense is gone. Even, uh, this is so obvious. It's like, I'm not even going to bother calling him anything else. And, and what's hilarious about this is I think the writers legitimately think, no one will notice this, but when we reveal it, they'll look back and yeah. see, look at all the, the look at the things we put in place. Yeah. Oh, it was all see, hidden, really, but it was hidden in plain sight. No, it's not hidden in plain sight. It's just in plain, bleedingly obvious sight. It's like so many references of totally not Sauron saying things like, looks can be deceiving <laughs> and stuff, and suddenly he's a great diplomat. Oh, you, I like forging things. I want to forge things. Look at all the forging stuff. And then it's like... um. Give them something, you know, to master the fears that you can then have mastery over there. <laughs> yep. That is... Oh, gee. 
So subtle. And the other Mr. X is so poor. I know. Like when they talk about, oh, the meteorite, yeah, yeah, it's going to be him. <laughs> so, yeah, Sauron, well, he, like, yeah, we're not, I'm not even going to bother for the oh, sake of spoilers because the show has, like, spoiled it so obviously um, from the very beginning. And so it'll be very interesting to talk about his motivations and reasoning. You know, mm. why he sought out Galadriel, why he revealed his plans in the Southlands to her. Um, Sauron, why do you even, why did you, why do you give a map to your enemies, the location? Now, uh, there's another question. Why he said all these things, anyway. Um, so, <laughs> I just, I just laughed. Um, and then she says, by, so by your standards, I'm in this cell um, uh, because I've yet to identify what the queen fear, most fears. I'm like, no, Galadriel, mm -hmm. you're in there because you're a condescending cow and acted like a mewling And dog you don't dog. know any <laughs> persuasive terms or means yeah. of, of trying to convince someone of your ideas. And then, he, then you know, totally not Sauron gets up and says, yes, that's right. He's like, no, Sauron, she's, she's misinterpreting exactly what you said. It's just like... She would have said, that's not what I'm talking about. Look, you, shut up. <laughs> um, so then, then, um, she is being released. No, but then we've got we've to go back to the line. <sighs> Cease try... Oh, no, 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 we missed it. Is it? Did we, we miss it? Which line? Which line? Cease comparing me to a horse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, this like, is one of the... Uh, I forget where, but yeah. Yeah. In this is Basically, the... he's just like, well, you're galping through, you're really trenching through all this stuff. <laughs> and she just... Cease... Uh, what a Karen. What a Karen thing. Cease calling me a horse! <laughs> like, do you know how many... Oh, how many times people be compared to things in in allegory in this show? Elrond is compared to a dog. A dog can't bark at the moon, but you never have to pull it, pull it down. Uh, like she called Elrond an orc, a heavy breathing orc. Exactly, your brother compared you to a rock and a ship. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, don't even remind me of that. That. Uh... <laughs> And then she gets upset. I mean, she liked horses. She rode a horse. Yeah, I thought was... she loved horses. She's comparing me to a horse. You know, it's just one of those lines where I, I, I bursted out laughing. <laughs> That's true. It's just... Oh. Oh, but yeah, then we get into some... Mm. Just unbelievable... Oh. Cringe crap. Like, she, she's so... She, of course she can. She's Galadriel, right? Best show ever, everyone. So show. she's being not released, but she, like, by being released, meaning chucked on a boat, <coughs> shipped off. You're gone. That's exactly what she wanted. But now it's like, now she's no, I'm not leaving because I need your army. Yeah. It's like, no, you can leave now. Yeah. And wouldn't it be easy to get armies other way? You, like you found some even more compelling evidence of Sauron. You could go back to your king, get army there, anything yes. like that. Um, this is exactly what you wanted. But now she's... Hell bent and convinced, no, the Numenorians are going to help me because I demand it. And she won't leave. Wow, she is a Karen. My goodness. It, it, it's like everything that she gets told to do, she has to do the opposite because no one can tell her what to do. It's like that. Yeah. Even if it flips on, like, completely. Like, remember uh. how I said the characters just do 180s on their motivations gives me whiplash yep this is a i mean what last episode she wanted a boat she was trying to find a boat and they're like no 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 and they're like all right go on a boat how dare you <laughs> i will stay here because i want to you told me i have to go oh, oh yeah and so she like looks at him you know they're gonna and by the way that expression is just her throughout this whole episode almost um, my goodness. But all right, we need that. Could, can we make this full screen? Because we're going to go slowly. I'll pause a lot. Um, I'm not even sure if I can make it move slowly. So, guy, she just pushes him up. And he, he, oh, no resistance in this guy at all. He just goes with it. Oh, it's like, oh, woe is me. And then this guy doesn't doesn't bother to draw. Like, did he have a sword? I don't know. He tried they to They all swing. have weapons on them, and surely. So she just grabs him, throws him. It's like, what do I... Uh, I'll advise you not to get involved, but... Oh, no. He has a sword out, ready to do yeah. something. Doesn't do anything. And then the other two people that were behind her, they're, they're just in... in they all lined up to the cell. Up. And then she just, like, in and the cell, no resistance. I, I went back to this as well, because I rewatched this, 
and they close the cell gate door. You hear it go, boom. <laughs> and then it goes back in, she goes, Bleh! and somehow pushes them all back in. Somehow, one of the guards opened the uh. cell door, went back, and just all pushed them in. And so, she's unarmed, right? Yeah. Like, can, uh, pity you can't play this on slow motion, because there, oh, I'd love to go frame by frame. This is so uh, bad. It, so, again, like, watch what these guys do, right? They're doing nothing through this moment. And, well, hang on. Hang on. There's two people in front of her now? Hang yeah. on. So, because I thought there was two people behind and one person in front. Are there four or the three? Is there four or three? I thought there was three. Unless, okay. if there's four, I could be right. Oh, no, there is a guy there. Okay. 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 Yeah, so the two people behind her, see there? Yeah. Like, see, uh, oh, we are full screen. Yeah. So the two people behind her, she just throws this one guy into them and they're both like, Ugh! and see the guy furthest on the left. He's not even getting pushed by the guy that she's shoving into him. Yeah. He's doing nothing. He's just, like, moving compliantly with her, not resisting, not grabbing her, and they just go in there. Oh, like, he actually moves for her there. <laughs> and, uh, like, she's not even exerting herself, not even breaking a sweat. Gosh. And he's like, uh, I'm about to draw a sword. <laughs> so, girl power moment. Also, they, these are guards who just open the door and then they're like, we can't get out of the prison! <laughs> who has the keys? Yeah, does it lock automatically? Are these automatically locking doors? Oh, yeah, they think whatever they had to open the doors, yeah. they would still have it with them. So That's true as well. Take it out. But also, usually on medieval like doors like this, they actually need to be locked closed. Yeah. And they... Yeah, no, nah, that doesn't matter. And again, I'm just baffled. This guy has a sword against this un yeah, unarmed, unarmed woman. Oh, but I mean, and he's just like, oh, what do I do? Thing is, though, with how insanely powerful they've made her, I wouldn't take her on with a sword if she was unarmed. Oh, no. She's like, she's got the unbeatable power of Galadriel. Um, and then he's, he says, I can't very well let her leave to definitely not Sauron. And then he says. If you knew exactly where... Oh, no, he says, you could if you knew exactly where she was going. And I'm like, Sauron, that, that doesn't justify... What if she was going to murder babies? That's like, like... She could be doing any number of bad things. And that doesn't mean because you know where she's going, you can let her leave. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, uh, there we go. Yeah. And so, uh, Numenorians uh, talking. Uh, boring. He got kicked out. He didn't resign. What? Why did you do that? I got dismissed. And by the way, look at this mural on the back, right? It's like, who are the artists in Numenor? Because this is this is not good art. Like, like this is supposed to be Numenor at its height. True. And you know what? The, um, it's it's because they've only got one artisan. They can't get any more artists because this is be part clearly of the done by the same artist who did the one in the previous episode that had Elrond in it, mm. right? You can tell the uh, like the same disproportionate kind of way it's done. Same artist. It's like yeah. Numenor only yeah. has one artist. Yeah. It looks very cheap. Um, all right, so we've got Gladwell. Um, uh, th th so, see, like, this guy is doing nothing for me. Don't care. And then it cuts to Gladwell, and she just, like smashes through a metal-framed glass window. We see the other windows, right? Just... That thing is broken to smashed out, bent, and she just unarmed breaks in like, what the heck? And then the other windows, oh, I got, you know, stone and everything. So oh, it's just super yeah. strong as well. Also, is this like up how many stories? Did she climb? She climbed. Yeah, let's have a look at that. She climbed that tower from the outside and broke in through one of the upper windows. So she is like a spider woman <laughs> climber as well. There's nothing she can't do. I just do. feel like climbing that building would be more inconvenient than just going through I would upstairs. But yeah, but on top of that, she would more easily deal with the soldiers because she yeah, can fight people out of the way. Right? They'll just trip and fall. Then the difficulty of climbing on the outside. Uh. But they don't even show it. They just like, she's there because she's Galadriel. Power Galadriel. My goodness, right? Is there anything she can... Look at the metal there. Like, just smashed it. And then... 
oh, the king is sick or invalid. Yeah. It's like, I thought they were building up to something a bit more... Because they're, they're keeping a big secret. Yeah, but uh, well, 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 the king. Is this would be common knowledge. Or... So, so she's the queen regent because the king is sick. This yeah. is not something to be afraid of to hide from everyone. This is just common knowledge, this normal operating procedure in the kingdom. King sick, regent, you're in control, next in authority, like, stuff, stuff like that. But it's like it was this big hidden secret and therefore big reveal. And it's like, oh... I thought he was going to be, I don't know, had some kind of curse on him, had black, smoky, Sauron infested eyes or something at his yeah, something, something interesting. But no, he's just, he's, he's like getting older. Well, I thought at least, like, because he used to be sympathetic with the elves, when you saw Gladjo, he'd be like, oh, Gladjo, finally, okay, let me get the army ready, let yeah, me do this <laughs> But instead, it's just like, oh, <laughs> I'm an old man. Even him yeah. being the biggest sin for Gladjo would have been better. Like, he's just <laughs> this old guy in bed, that's it. <laughs> That was the... That's the reveal. That's it. That's it. And for some reason, right, the Queen now has flipped. One, she asks, like, how did you know I'd come here? That's not explained. But maybe it was Sauron because it says, it doesn't matter if uh, if you know where she's going, and then he probably told the, the okay. regent guy, and then he told the Queen and everything. Um, and uh, anyway, so... But then she's just like, I'll, I'll listen to your thing. She says, you know, I'm ready to escort you away. And Galadriel's kind of explanation is that I know what it's like to not be believed or something, or be on my own or something like that. Mm -hmm. Something, and then the Queen is, okay, I'll hear you out. That's a bit of a flip. You know, your father was loyal to the Elvish way, so you're, I, I, you know. Why are you not? Okay. What's changed, what's happened with the Queen to make her want to answer that question? Glad you just asked. Tell me. <laughs> She's like, okay, I will. <laughs> please. <laughs> she said, please. That's that's the most polite thing. It's the, said. It's the magic word. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and then they just. <laughs> so the queen who has had like up with Galadriel's crap, being really angry with her snobbery and everything, really worried about this, what we find out is this prophecy of doom and everything, and she is ready to yeet Galadriel out of the kingdom, but because she just asked again and says, please, Sam's like, oh, okay, I'll, t I'll tell you now. I guess so. <laughs> that always says to be polite, so... Yeah. <laughs> and she's a prisoner who just assaulted guards, broke out of prison, she's violent, and all this, she is like unhinged nutcase. Yeah. <laughs> And like, you there is a tempest in me. Yeah, I know. She's like unstable. Do not be alone with this lady, Queen. Like, Queen, get soldiers and something. But now she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll just go with you. Oh, that was something that really, really annoyed me. Look what they have here. It's, this show does not deserve. Can we make this full screen? Mm -hmm. Look what they have right here. Do you see what is in the left of the screen? Right there. We can bring it down now. No. No. You don't deserve it. Shame on you, okay? This is not continuity with the Peter Jackson trilogy. You do not deserve the na you do not deserve Nazil, the sort of well, that becomes a Lindell. Um that bull crap. Bull crap. Now they might say that I oh, this was what the sort of Lindell was because this is gold. It's different, guys. Totally different. This is gold, and the sort of Lindell is silver. It's definitely it's, def it's not the same. No, no. Um, cheap, cheap uh, uh, Easter egg that just makes me hate this show more because this is not continuity with um, the, the Jackson trilogy. You don't deserve it, and I'm insulted that you would put that sword in this show. Anyway, that's <laughs> my like. Get that out of there. Um, so then she's explained, yeah, she was chosen to rule in his stead, uh, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, that turns out uh, there's a, uh, like, they have a, a seeing stone, a Palantir thing, and it revealed something bad. Okay. And then so she gets Gladiol to touch it, and this is where uh, it's the vision of the destruction of Numenor. Okay, look at all those petals falling. Ooh, ooh, set up, right? Um, ah, and that's like, 
it's, it's just a vision. So, <laughs> uh, so. I had to break some of this down, this, some of the logic that's being portrayed here to try and understand the motivations. Um, she says the vision of destruction starts with Galadriel's arrival. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, is there any more information about it just starts when the elf arrives? And, and is this why they stopped all elves coming, but then the, the father was okay with elves? Did he have the vision? Did he stop? I... I this is getting a little confusing. Um, and then you oh, clearly you don't want this to come to fruition. And it's distinctly tied with Galadriel. So, okay, maybe it does make sense that get her out of here as soon as possible. Okay. But is this like just fulfilling the prophecy? You can't escape it. Uh, who knows, right? But um, this is their explanation of, their, of the queen wanting Galadriel gone and stuff. But then, so there's... Confusing conversation, right? Because the Queen says only Numenor can bring its bring about its downfall. So I was okay, so it's not really Gladriel's fault. No, it's gonna be the people. So, so what's the issue with Gladriel then? Mm, I don't know. Um, yeah, see uh, the vision begins with your arrival. Um, and it's like you will believe I will bring about Numenor's downfall? We gotta pause it as like only Numenor, and so again, I'm getting a bit some mixed messages here. And then she then she leaps to a conclusion that it's gonna be by um, the Valar or, or someone, and that it is by abandoning virtue. And this line made me just raise an eyebrow. The virtue you speak of was your ancestors' loyalty to the elves. And I'm like, I don't think that's canon oyster. I thought it was them fighting Morgoth. It wasn't like so. The virtue is doing what the elves say. True. No, no, no. Elves, mm. they could be killing babies or whatever, but if you do what they say, that's virtuous according... Yeah. yeah, if they serve more goth instead, <laughs> does that mean that they would have gotten the island as well? I know, right? Like, Galadriel seems definition, serve the elves, and by extension, she means serve her. She wants the army, yep. and so... <laughs> Galadriel's guide of virtue is people doing what she says, it seems like. Um, and it's like, what, your, your father believes this? Like, I don't, really? It's like... Yeah. Again, they always talk about, you know, elves and men, they're separated. Mm. You know, oh, my father's path nearly destroyed us. What did he do? Well, we find out. We actually find out. But what then, happened? it's... He was loyal to the elves, mm -hmm. right? And that nearly destroyed them because the people rebelled. But this is where they don't explain. They don't explain why they rebelled. And she said, the people rebelled it because he was, he liked elves. Why? We'd given nothing. That's it. And what? Where's the conflict? Where's the motive? And, and this is the whole thing, though. This is why she won't help Galadriel and she's afraid of elves because she thinks the people will rebel again. <laughs> And well. what they set up previously with them ready to, like, kill all elves and mm. all that stuff, they're afraid that one elf appears means that they'll come and take all their jobs. It's like, I, well, I guess, yeah, the people, they are setting up the people of this unreasonable hatred of elves. Not established as to why, but that's just what it is. Uh, <laughs> and then the guy was like, oh, it's not helping the elves that will do it. I, I, I could destroy Numenor. It's avoiding the war that, that will destroy it. And uh, <laughs> uh, and so I'm just getting a bit of like mixed messages. It's a bit confusing and, and all that. And so <laughs> choose the path of uh, uh, sorry, oh, sorry, choose not the path of fear, but of faith. And so I'm trying to decide like what would be the you know a just response for the queen. Look, she probably should take Sauron as a bit of a threat, hmm. admittedly. I would think that would be a fair kind of response. Um, does she have enough evidence for it? Some random guy appearing. Oh, I was driven out by orcs. Evidence would be good, but still, it's a bit of a warning. So what you'll probably want to do is send scouts or people just to confirm, is the bad things happening, you know? Um, uh, but anyway, she... Um, it says, like, what she's saying is too fine a thread to ha from which to hang the fate of a kingdom. There's a, another big super chat. It equals to about 400 Australian. Wow, so QAI, is that from, um, 
Qatar? Or, uh, but anyway, we got a big one. 1,000 QAR. Wow, thank you, sir. It says, thank you for your reviews. This is from Muhammad Albanai, I think. Um, and uh, thank you for your reviews. They are far more entertaining than the show. <laughs> thank you, sir. Um, I heard that they can't explain why the Numenorians hate the elves because Amazon doesn't own the rights for that part of the story. <laughs> Do you know if that's true? What is the... No, it can't be true because they have mentioned things from the Silmarillion in the First Age. They mentioned more. Yep. They mentioned Feanor's hammer. They mentioned the Silmarils, and so they they could they must be able to mention the reason why they hate the elves, but they don't. It's like, this is important context for this scene, and they don't give it to us. Like, do they have a list? Like, it, it, the you know, the rights holders like, oh well, yeah, but not that. You're not like, like you're only allowed 150 words that reference this Silmarillion. It might actually be that, you know. <laughs> uh. But uh, thank you very much for the generous super chat, sir. I'm um, very happy that you're enjoying it. So, again, they're not justifying certain things. And so the Queen is basically saying, I kind of take what you're saying seriously, but my kingdom might... It might destroy my kingdom. And she's referencing the fact that the, uh, the people rebelled against her father for supporting the elves. And so even if there's bad things in the Southlands, if I support you, the people might still rebel. Mm. This is important context because nothing of that setup changes. <laughs> and, and the show went out of their way to show how much the people are willing to go, ah, we hate elves. Yeah. That's the setup. Let's see if they acknowledge it or... Remember how they set things up and they don't pay it off? Yeah, they just forget we'll, it all completely. We'll, we'll just yeah. see if they do anything with this, right? Uh, and so, uh, th this is, uh, they, they got like a chicken or something uh, from foraging. And that, that's about it. About it. The, the other kid comes back and he's got food, but like, with, there's a lot of people here, right? And that would only feed like the, maybe 20, 30 people for a day. And they're just, they just all scrummage around to it. Yeah, yeah, he's just freak out and it's like, oh, food! Um, okay, 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 okay. So, um, uh, uh, I, I'm still in the notes of the virtue, the king's loyalty. Okay, now we're on the food he brought back. Okay. Um, uh, so, the orcs, right? They, how long have they been looking for this kid? All day. Oh, like, it seems like all day, right? So... She's like, where, where is, where is my son? Oh no, is, is, is there? The orcs are in. It's dark. You can barely see, but they're still looking for him in the same spot. You think what? You'd, you'd spread out a bit. Uh, no one, no orc bothered to look in the well that entire time. <gasps> oh yeah, yeah. And at this point, I was still wondering, like, where's the sword? Because they didn't show him stashing it anywhere. And uh, now it's like really dark, you can barely see it. But anyway, he climbs out of it. <laughs> and uh, but it, th this whole sequence of him sneaking around, you know, like not being seen by orcs, one is pretty comical. It, it's this. And it felt like a video game. Yeah. We had to sneak through by mm -hmm. each portion. Like, yeah, it did not feel good. And so lucky that missed him. He threw a thing and missed him really that much, right? So he sinks off. And this is one of those things where you do realise that just because we don't see people in shot doesn't mean they're not there. Yeah. And we get told where people are when they do come in shot. Mm. And a classic example, like, so he's trying to sneak through. If uh, you guys just pay attention to this corner right here, right? So he's trying to sneak around and he jumps in the grass, okay? And is like, oh, that guy, he was, even though he was kind of looking at him, but it turns and it's like, oh, there was a, an orc. Just, like, see see this orc right here? Could have seen him. He was walking in that direction, facing that direction the entire time. And just because he comes onto, you know, frame now, doesn't mean he didn't exist. The orc would have seen him. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. And then there is this moment right here, right? I paused it here because it, it's so obvious. It's like he looks at the camera and I'm like, oh, he's going to turn the corner and run to an orc. Yep. <laughs> Just exactly what happens. He's like, it's such an obvious setup. He smiles. I'm free. I made it. Obvious misdirect. And then, ah, oh, got an orc got him. You sneaky orc. Right? And then, so there was that. And another insanely predictable thing. The orc is over him. I'm like, ah, oh, 
Discount Legolas is just going to appear out of nowhere and yep, save him. Save him. <laughs> just, you know, Deus Ex Machina save, appear like convenience, which is exactly what happens. Bang! Oh, lucky he was there. Obvious. Gosh, it's so damn predictable. And also, when the orc found him, right, and throws him down, why doesn't he alert the others? Just like, oh, I found him! And I got alert. Yeah. But, but cause, because he didn't tell anyone that he found the kid, they kill the orc and they're able to... They still get chased later on, but still, they, they a swarm would be on them if this orc just sounded the alarm. Um, and also, so it wasn't as obvious here, because, you know, the elf guy might have been able to pick up something. Mm -hmm. But then in the next scene, okay, um, uh, it has them running through a forest. And uh, my first... <laughs> like, you can barely see, but it's like, oh, hang on. They gave him his weapons back? Yeah. Like, his it's sword, his yeah. bow, like, and arrows and everything. Like, what? You're supposed to deliver a message. You don't... Why would you arm him? For that too, I was like, well, they gave him everything Everything. Back. <laughs> and we're like, whatever you do, don't come back and kill us. Oh. Now that you actually know what we are. It's like, good thing, because you know, if he didn't have those weapons, the kid would be dead and everything. Again, why did they give him the weapons? So he could save him. So he could save the kid. They they did something so stupid that no enemy, no one in war, like, would ever do, hand like a prisoner of war and releasing all his weapons back. They could, everything. They did it to make the save. Because they can't think of any... Like, it wouldn't have been hard for him to find a weapon along the way. Small little two-second scene or, or anything, right? But I guess, no, they're fancy weapons. We don't want them to get out of the show. But anyway, that's number eight of astronomically stupid thing that they do because they can't think of anything logical to justify what they want in the show. Eight! We're up to eight. And these are... They're not small. They're, they're just... They, they're jaw-dropping moments of stupidity. Like, people would not do this. Why are you doing, like, they forgot food? <laughs> oh, my goodness. And there are a lot of orcs. Like, there's, like, 30 or 50 orcs chasing him in this. And, oh, there was the, the arrow-catching moments. Uh, mm. Which, like you said, there's, like, 50 orcs. And he goes, catch mm. the arrow. Pull. Kill mm. one orc. <laughs> there's still 50 coming towards your location. What was the <laughs> point of that? Gosh, you can barely see. I'm not even sure if uh, the uh, audience can see it in, in here because it's so Chad, dark. Can you see anything? So this looks so fake where he catches, so he pushes the kid down because, oh, Arrow was going to get him. He just he just knew that. So let's bring this full screen because this is like, there is slow-mo in the slow-mo. They slowed it down, but the Arrow is moving at like a snail's pace for them to get the shot and have him catch. It's like, you could have just made a digital Arrow something, make it faster. But, like, look at this. It's just... The arrow is... You bull crap that! They were like... I, I know how fast arrows can move. Yeah. I'm an archer. I shoot them. Like, it's like the, you're not hiding in the slow-mo. Like I said, slow-mo in the slow-mo. It looked awfully fake. Um, how, what was the budget of this show again? <laughs> it was too much. Oh, Too much wow. money for anyone to own or comprehend. And... Uh, so I... He does the upside down grip. There's no real reason, just for his fancy is doing something. Look, people can shoot that way. I'm not saying it can't. It's an awkward grip, and it's not the most like there's a reason why most people don't do it because it is a bit awkward and takes it. Mm. You can shoot accurately that way. I'm not saying you can't, but there's no, there's no real justification apart from making him look. Oh, how, look how unique and original fancy he is. Um, she appears. So, so she just, she just knows where they are <laughs> for some reason she had the impression to go through the woods i don't to get to town and not go the other way around like there's a bridge on this tower which implied a road mm. like there's a more common road and she she just knows where like did she hear them i don't know she just she's there and if anything this would slow them down more but the kid is injured and that you they show him limping and for the distance that they have but that they've shown between him and the orcs they would the orcs would have been on top of them ages past yeah. look at he can barely walk the kid but anyway so now we come to the moment where i i busted a gut laughing when it happened in the show i was like oh come off it and i just started laughing right so they get free of the woods and the kid falls down and it's like oh they're, they're, 
they, they get to be uh, assailed upon, and Lego, oh, this kind of Legolas, he gets his sword ready, she stands by him, she's got the sickle, they're gonna die, what will they do? And then Deus Ex Sonicus <laughs> appears, but they're vampires! They're, like, uh, this is where, because uh, even with the sun, I was like, surely not, they, no, they would, they, no. And then... <laughs> <laughs> the sun. And I couldn't believe it because hang on, hang on. They're wearing the helmets that cover yeah, their heads yeah, from the sun. Yeah. The, the, the show has depicted these orcs going into sunlight already with nearly as much as what they're wearing. And even if they're not, it's like, it's so weird that they make them vampires. It doesn't kill them though. Mm. And this is like, you know, I, he's got. The big thing they've been searching for, if anything you would think would encourage them to get push them through the discomfort to go in the sunlight, maybe this would. But no, they're full on vampires. They're like, ah, oh, no, the sun, they can't even... <laughs> also, I thought they were shooting arrows before 10 seconds ago. Yeah. Just because they're like, what, how many metres away from them? Doesn't mean they can just get like Where an their, army of arrows. Where's their bows? They had them before. They're just conveniently gone now. Well, actually, they do shoot some. They shoot like five. Where? where? Well, like, so far, there's just the... before the shot ends. So, it so takes they... them a while. It does. <laughs> and you think at this point, you'd be like, all right, you got broken. Like, pick up your kid and run. That's what you need to do. You need to get out of there. Yeah, and it's not its not canon that they burn in the sun, right? They just... It's discomforting to them. They don't like it. Mm. That's thats what I've understood the context for for ages. And so uh, the thing is, they don't move over long distances at daylight, where, uh, uh, but they can certainly go out in daylight. Mm. And for brief periods, it's just a bit uncomfortable for them. But here, it's its nonsense. And, and they literally play it off that this is stopping them the sun when it's the thing they've been searching for, the sword thing. And I just like, the stupidity of this just made me laugh out loud. I just... Yeah. <laughs> nah, especially when five arrows just hit, not their feet, but close to. Yeah, I, uh, so where are these arrows? Because so they're like, we're safe now. What do we... It's just before the scene. This is a, this is a, like... <laughs> they should, oh, there's one. Uh, what, we saw one arrow after all that time. There's another one. And, a, and then a few a few, the a few more come off it. It took them that long to bother to shoot at them. Bull crap. And even then... Bull crap that the sun would have stopped them. Like, also, it's a cloudy day, yeah. cloudy morning. You see the overcast moment, and then the orcs are yeah. back at it again. Bull crap. Yeah. I'm not. I don't believe you. Show. Don't give me this. Okay. So, um, scene of uh, uh, dwarf scene, right? So, this this shot right here. I want you to pay attention to someone. It is the dwarf that's right next to Deza. She's a female dwarf. She's like the one right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does she look bearded right there, Nathan? In fact, can't really. Do, do any no. of the women, female dwarves have beards? None of them do. It's like because they made a big. But... but wait, wait, wait. We go back and suddenly, you know, carries on for a bit. That lady, that, that dwarf there. She's got these big kind of grey things. <laughs> she's like she's got a beard now. Or 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 it's really strong sh shade, actually. It might be shadow. But anyway, where are they? Like, there was an interview with one of the producers on the show. Yeah. So people said, yes, the female dolls have beard. I was there where they painstakingly add, like, you know... I'm yeah, well, you know what I reckon they'll do? They'll just put mm. out a male dwarf and be like, that's a female one. Yeah. And they're wearing rags. What are they wearing? Just And so... I, I, th this isn't really setting up anything, um, because yeah, just, they just uh, the dwarf stone singing because because they're trapped, and that she was singing that the uh, the rocks the, or stones would release the dwarves trapped in the mines, or because reason, yeah, release yeah. the bodies of the miners, and bre with breath still inside them. Okay, yeah, and, and the during comes in and is like, yeah, it's all good, yeah, yeah, they're safe, they're all good, it's all worked. Good job. Could have started the scene just here. <laughs> like, but they wanted to show the singing, I guess. Yep. Uh, so this is the thing where um, Duran's like, he's angry with his dad because his dad said no more mining for Mithril. Yep. Because it's dangerous. Yep. Okay. But Duran will never speak to him again. But then Elrond's like, ah, oh, yes, father, everything. I wish I could... Basically, my father... 
Like, did he become a star or something? I forget. Yeah, yeah, he, he, after the war mm. or whatever, he became a bearer of the star going back and forth mm. and whatever. Is that the one who had the Silmaril? I can't remember. Um, because one of the Silmarils was set up in the sky and the star. Uh, the fate of the Silmarils wound it up in the sky, wound it up in the sea, wound it up in the earth because it was cast into a um, uh, uh, lava thing. Um, anyway, uh, that's Silmarillion stuff. And I'm not a lore expert by any means. But anyway, so there's that. And then he's like, if only I could speak to my father. And that makes Durin think, meh, meh. Still good, I got a dad. I'll speak to him. I will admit, this is the one bit of the show I actually somewhat liked. This mm -hmm. was the bearable part for me. I was like, you know what? We're having some, char you know, our character's going through something, and the character's trying to help him with it. Mm -hmm. This is actually kind of feeling like a story. This far in. Yeah. <laughs> We're scraping the bottom of the barrel yeah. to find any compliments. The fact that like, this is the best bit. Yeah. Um, and then there you get all chummy. And look, this is one of those few moments where, hey, it's a bit lighthearted, where, like, how did you actually meet? And uh, I was fighting all uh, trolls, and uh, there was three trolls, and I was fighting them, and they have a... That was big banter, but... That was also the one bit I was like, you know what? They, they pulled it off. They pulled off the banter between the two friends. One thing! <laughs> but that doesn't excuse anything yeah, else I know. in this episode. Writing 101, they achieved it. Well done. <laughs> um, okay, and so Duran apologizes, but the, the, and then his dad says, uh, "There's nothing to forgive." But I was like, uh, "They didn't really show Duran doing anything wrong." Yeah. Like I, again, the, we we say a moment ago that that scene was good with the mm -hmm. with Elrond and Duran, but then this scene, we're just like, uh, the, they don't pay, it feels like they're paying off something, but there's nothing here that yeah. there's no conflict or resolution that needed to happen. And then the dad loves his son. Yeah. And great. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, but uh, and then yeah, he wants to go hang with Elrond. Yeah, like he, Durin is told that he'll go now. He'll go to Celebrimbor. Um, oh, sorry, Gilgalad. Um, yeah, so Gilgalad bore no intel, ill intent when they saw, uh, sent um, uh, Elrond there. So again, the mystery, the right, the reason why they need the secret it doesn't matter. Oh, yep. It matters now. But then they think Celebrimbor was hiding something or someone, um, and uh, and Durin gets sent to go to the elves to maybe find out what they're hiding, and that's that scene. Ah, so here we find the message he was supposed to do. Also, look, no one likes this relationship. Mm -hmm. All these people hate the elves. This elves mm -hmm. shown up, and she's getting very intimate with him. In this watchtower area where everyone can see. I know they were trying to hide it before. Now they're pretty. Now they're just like, oh, we're all screwed. So I guess it's yeah. fine. <laughs> <sighs> and they don't tell anyone either. He just says it to her, and then she's like, Yeah, well, oh, she's no. she's the leader. She's leading everyone. You would think so, to maybe have a public announcement or something or other. And so I want to get like, I have a message from the one who commands our enemy. All right. And effectively, yeah, it's surrender or die. But yeah. it's like that your people may live if you forsake or claim to these lands and then swear fealty or loyalty. Yeah, I swear for, surrender or die. Like That's yeah. the message. Ah. Oh, oh, predictable, lame, nothing creative or interesting. And... Was it worth releasing a highly trained super elf warrior with his weapons to do that? Like, yeah. I think I think an orc could pull that off. Yeah, and then you get to keep one of the, you know, elves. They, they seem to have better stamina than humans. They're, they're good slaves. They're like, the reason to keep this guy alive and send him free is just utter bullcrap. And it, again, remember the stupid moments to justify what they wanted the plot? Yep. They wanted his life to be saved, to have the relationship, to have it because he's a main character, and they couldn't think of any... Good reason to do it. Uh, to send a message that we could send any other person to send it, and we'll give him weapons because he. So, number nine, number nine of stupid thing to justify where they want to go in the story. Um, uh, and then we, there's the exchange between the kid and the old guy. So it turns out the old guy hid the sword there. It's yeah, his sword. He has the sword. He well, has the sword. It used to be his. I was like, okay, is he basically worships Sauron, yep. essentially. Now, my question is, is like, how, uh, all he knows is the kid has the sword. 
He doesn't know the kid worships Sauron or is going to... So, so, so why is he suddenly outing himself as basically a devil worshipper? And... And why did he leave then? And you can't tell me this kid, the Southlands, don't know who Sauron is. Like, the elves have been monitoring these people for generations because of who their ancestors served, Morgoth and the people that served Morgoth. So you're telling me that he doesn't know who Sauron is, the kid? And uh, so then this would like be like, so he, again, the guy, the old guy, <laughs> he doesn't know if the kid will out him, tell on him or anything. What, what's his plan? And we don't know. It's just... It's 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 bad sword and Sauron's gonna come back and I'm evil and and yeah, and the kids like, okay, <laughs> are they are they gonna be making a? It seems like they're trying to make an arc that the kid might be turning evil. Yeah, he's gonna turn evil. The thing is, no, he's gonna be tempted and then he'll choose the good side. That's mm. my prediction. Okay. Yeah, I don't want him to. <laughs> I want him to be a villain I can hate. Yeah. But also, oh, don't worry, I hate most of the heroes in this yeah, show yeah, as well. Yeah. <laughs> but also, these people are trapped in this confined space without any food. No one's doing anything. I know. They're, they're prepared. They're, they're, they're just sitting around. Battle. No one's deciding to leave. No one's thinking to go back to get more food. Everyone's just sitting there going, man, what a place. We're gonna die. <laughs> We're gonna Basically. start it. So there's the Adar guy again. Uh, they found it. It's in the the, the, the sword. It's yep. in the tower. So now he like that's the scene. That that's it. Now next episode we're probably going to get them. I mean, there. I mean, we didn't. Uh, it's kind of obvious that they'll tell him. I'm not sure what we what we got. What what that scene did for the show to move it forward and stuff. We don't learn nothing more about the sword. Why they need everything is play or anything. It's just oh stuff happening. Um, <laughs> so glad you was there, right? They're, they're, this is a big, like, you know, like fair, farewell ceremony where with lots of people, the Queen is there. And uh, I'm starting to think elves, just in general, have some type of issue against sitting down in boats. I think it's their superiority complex. Yeah, it's like... Uh, they I'll, have to stand! I'll go in this boat, but I'm not going to sit down! <laughs> Because, like... Also, if you've been on a boat, it's hard to stand on a boat. Well, that might be why she's doing it. Look how, look how great I am. Look how good... And so... There's this exchange. And, uh... I want to get it because they... I'll skip... There, and yeah. they're like... Glad you... It's just literally a seat that you can sit down. It's like, no, I'll stand. It just makes her look more imperious and arrogant and all that. It's also, like, I, I don't know. Maybe this is just me being me. I think it's so dumb. They get in a rowboat to go to a bigger boat. <laughs> They're at the docks. The other Could the boat reach it out of out? Like, you can boat a bigger dock. <laughs> it would make much more sense. But instead they make it a very awkward yeah. rowboat scene where they're just all rowing to a bigger boat. And then she... You know. So, yeah, the, the council's like, you did the right thing, my queen. And then she notices something. A petal. A petal has fallen. And she's like, more petals are falling. And she's like, oh, no. lots of petals are falling. And it's like, remember that weird conversation that was in a previous episode? That was like a, a like a weird thing where Elindil would already know it. He's mm. looking at the tree and the queen comes in and, say, and says like, you know, legend says when the petals fall from the tree, that, like, I, that, that seems like common knowledge. Why would they have a weird conversation on segue where it's not related to why she called Elindil there. Mm. She just mentions the thing, oh, it's to explain this scene here. Yeah. Guess what? That's number 10 of some <laughs> stupid thing they do because they can't think of a natural way to try and explain the, um, the, the, the uh, I believe that they have that falling petals on this magic special tree means something bad is happening in Numenor, essentially. There's any number of ways that they could do it. Did Gladriel know? You know, they could have uh, had, like, you know, her walk near the tree and see a, a petal fall and then someone explain that to her on the significance. But they did so did it with Elindul, who would know, because they're lazy and they can't think and, and ten ten things where they force something that's dumb doesn't make sense poor writing or is stupid to justify something later on but what's also dumb about this right queen is like freaking out over this okay everything that they set up hasn't changed all right she was deathly afraid that her entire kingdom would rebel mm -hmm. 
in outrage if she helped an elf, okay? Hasn't changed, but because she sees it, now she believes Galadriel. And I look, I don't mind that this could be a sign of the gods. There are gods in this world, okay? Mm. Uh, this could be a sign that uh, something, you're doing something bad, you really need to listen or, or whatnot. But then they don't follow through with what they set up in the entire episode, that Numenor hates elves, that their people are ready to go nuts if you even have an elf in here, yeah, just, yeah. uh, just as a guest, okay? And then they literally rebelled in the past against the king, almost overthrew him or something, uh, because he liked elves. And now she's saying, we're gonna, I'm gonna go with Galadriel, um, give her an army, and everyone's like, yay, let's do it. Now, clearly, they're setting up that she, bad things might happen while she's away. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the council guy might usurp the power um, because isn't the queen horrible for helping elves and going away and all the people that don't support are going with her, everything. But they're not showing right here the, what they set up. In this scene, they are showing no you know, anger, distrust. No, nah, everyone just like, takes it. He's like, yeah, this is great. We're all on board. Even the guy is like, yes. And I know he's probably lying if he wants her power, but it just comes off very, like, they just flipped on what they were sitting on my door. Mm. Oh, by the way, Sauron's free. <laughs> also, did I see it right that after the Queen does that message, the Gladiator just comes in from the side? Yeah, yeah, she just walks in. So they, they send her out on a boat. To come off the boat and come back in. Well, well, she clearly changed her mind after she was on the boat, but that would have been a comical scene where the Queen would have been like, no, stop, stop, come back, come back. And then be like, what, you're, you're helping an elf? What are you, Queen, what are you doing? He's like, oh, look, 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 I, I need to do, just... <laughs> come to the Great Hall, have an announcement. Yeah, have an announcement. 12 p.m. <laughs> I, I, it just made no sense to have a scene where, like, all right, glad you'll... Bye! And then it's, <laughs> all right, everyone, glad you're staying. We're all going to go to war together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very jarring. Yeah, I know. I, um, yeah, and the line was, the faithful believe that when the white petals fall, the very tears of the Valar... It's a, it's a very... Tears of the Valar. Anyway, mm. it, it shows why it was forced. I already mentioned that. Yeah, Sauron's released. Um, and then... It, yeah, she reveals Galadriel like no one knew that she was there when everyone would have seen her being brought back off the boat. There was heaps of people there. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's like, oh, she's really here? No one saw? It's like, come on. And this is where, by what they set up in this episode, everyone would flip out. Yeah. Everyone would be like, w why, why is she here? This elf, evil elf witch <coughs> has cast some spell that has gained control of our queen mm. because the queen is now giving her an army and sailing with her off to another land. It's like such a big 180 flip. Yeah. I, like, you would think this is mind control. <laughs> and this is, everyone saw her act like a cow to the queen, being demanding, condescending, all that stuff. And everyone, now the queen's just rolling over for her. I'll be like, what's going on? And then, here's all the ships will depart in 10 days. They read it out in the square. Everyone reacts like, oh, okay. I'm near them. Yeah, that that is just... Reasonable, reasonable. We hate Not elves. like a day ago, that square, they're all saying elf lover. Yeah, I know. Elf lover. And then they even ask for volunteers. And Everyone's this, is, like... this is a pause, but then they're like, I'll go, I'll go. And then heaps of people, look at them all. Yep. There's not a single objection. No. No one's like, hey, this isn't right. Uh, They'll take our jobs and our children. <laughs> None of that there. No. And and uh, I think we're towards the end. Yeah, yeah that's, and that's it. it. And then they're both like, yeah. Get ready, everyone. Get ready. It's going to get good. <laughs> we promise. And that's Rings of Power episode four. Oh, there we go. Wow, wow, this show is awful. This show yeah. is yeah. complete crap. And when I, like, just to, again, reiterate, there were 
10 very clear identified moments where stupid things happened, yeah. okay? Really dumb. They forgot to bring food <coughs> to the place where they get a hunker down for a seat. Right to just justify what happens in this dumpster fire of a show, because they're that incompetent. What complete <sighs> driveling crap this show is! Oh my goodness! <laughs> there. Any any last thoughts? Summers. Well, of course we're not done yet, no, guys. No. We're going to be chatting with you. There's super chats to get to, of course. But wow. Wow, wow, wow. I, I mean, thank goodness there were no half-foots. Yes! That's a good point! No That's half-foots. my favourite part of the episode! Oh. The half-foots didn't even appear! Chat's been appreciated. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> no, like, Viking... Like, what would you even call... Barbaric half-foots <laughs> that leave their, their own kin to die? Oh, my goodness. Oh. So... This episode is sponsored by myself because the release of my graphic novel is out, the graphic novel adaptation of my book. Uh, so we'll take the screen down. But guys, uh, is that, like, I got the best artist for it. And if you, because one of the things what we're trying to do, like Rings of Power is such driveling crap. Mm. Where is good media? Well, I'm a writer. I'll try and make some of my own, and uh, I have. I've written a novel, and if you are interested in checking out my novel, the second edition is available in the launch of the graphic novel, where you can get it. It's got a new special edition cover. You can get the uh, really, like, collector edition covers from things, and Leatherbound. There's a Leatherbound version of my novel. I love Leatherbounds. They're awesome. You can get that, and you can get the graphic novel. Get one of the best artists in the world. I think you guys really like, love it. Uh, and because if this goes well, and I'm hoping it will, mm. I want to I want to make more. I, I have heaps of stories that I want to make. More graphic novels. Like, yeah. I have an entire superhero universe of all these characters that I'd love to produce. So first link in the description, right? Right, right there. Click on it. Uh, check it out. I think you guys will really appreciate it. All right, here. Um, Thank you, everyone, joining us. We're not done yet, like I said. We still have oh so glorious Super Chats to get to because uh, what I love is chatting with you guys. It's a heap of fun. And uh, re- also, thank you for everyone who has also Super Chatted. Uh, the donations do help out a lot. Where we really do appreciate them. And so I will just uh, bring them up. and bring them up right here. Okay, so scrolling down... Oh, wow, we got a lot of them. Love you guys. Okay, so um, Joe Nelson for 20 GBP. Thank you, sir. Shad's ad took... Uh, Shad's ad... Shad's ads took me, and I strayed out of thought and time. Kindle store wheeled overhead. I love watching your Rings of Power reviews, and seems to have brought your book due to uh, sub- <laughs> subtle subliminal messaging. I didn't know I had that power. Subtle. Awesome. I didn't, I didn't know I was that sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's awesome. Uh, Jacob Carter for $5 US. God bless you all. Thanks for watching it for us. Much love from the US. Love you too. Appreciate it. Uh, Bilbo T. Baggins <laughs> for wow. two uh, GBP says, She is always right. Send Bezos to the moon. She must be the sea. The she is always right. I, 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 I see what you said there. Um, there was that massive uh, uh, donation from Crazy Tiger Person. I'm going to say it, read it again because uh, I, you know, I really appreciate being so generous. Uh, this quote is by King Theoden. Where now are the horse and the rider? Where is the horn that was blowing? They have passed like rain on the mountain, like wind in the meadow. The day have gone... The days have gone down in the west behind the hills into shadow. How did it come to this? And then he follows that up with every Tolkien fan when they see the Rings of Power is, how did it come to this? Oh, I... I oh, it's so bad. It's... Lady Fossilot for $5 US says, Hail, watch, hail to you, my lady. Saluting you and your good work, I would like to shout out Hello Future Me. His intact integrity in the face of Amazon is refreshing. Love Tim. Love Hello Future Me. I've collaborated with him a few times. Doesn't surprise me he is a man of integrity. Um, and uh, good on him. Good on him. Eric K for $5 US says, Nerdronic Raid Shad. Awesome. Awesome. Nerdrotic, there's not a lot of people that you raid me, but you can raid me. <laughs> it didn't come out right. Yeah, don't raid me, please. <laughs> Flag Ninja for $5 US. 
I don't have a dog in this fight, but you have my sympathy as a Trek fan. They're running the same playbook. It, they're running the same playbook. It really does seem like that. That was a, that was a, a sound from the ether. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Andreas Dimopoulos, Dimopoulos, I think, uh, for 10 euros says, first time actually managing to get your stream when it's actually live. Awesome Ooh. to have you, sir. And I can't wait to see how much more stupidity this show has. There's a lot. Keep up the good work, knights. You all suffer so much for us. We do it for you, sir. Yeah, this one was especially... This one was... Uh. <laughs> I love Scotch donates $1 US. Thank you, sir. Very much appreciated. Brahmable for $2 US. They don't... Uh, they don't have a blink in this show. WTF, Galadriel. I, it's like that. Galadriel has such little expression. And when it does, it kind of, like, throws you. Like, that horse riding scene. <laughs> it's like... It was... Uh, <laughs> Sarah Gould for 10 US says, tried watching along for sympathy, but after episode three, you're on your own. <laughs> Thank you for realizing the directing is as bad as the writing. Random artistic shots and no coaching actors into subtle cues. No coaching at all for the actors. Mm -hmm. Uh, Caleb Dixon for four ninety nine US says, Hey Shad, new to the show, uh, with how bad Rings of Power has been, uh, does that make you more worried about Disney Plus inheritance cycle? Uh, I see Aragon behind you. I think we have an Aragon somewhere. Um, I'm worried about anything Disney's making these days. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they kind of started this for us, didn't they, with the, like, all mm. the Marvel stuff we started watching? Uh, Jack Murdo um, uh, did that wonderful uh, $200 super chat. Thank you, sir. And that's where he asked about um, how I made the map in Everfall. And yeah, Photoshop. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, little techniques. And I don't think it's the best map in the world either. Not by a long shot. But, mm. uh, you know, there's tutorials. I learned how to do do enough. Um, Jesse Everin for $2 Canadian posts an emoji. And it's uh, it looks like a... a, a, a um, uh, what's the fruit that's got... It's like a, a pear. A pear waving. Uh, and then Grand Wazoo 42 for five euros posts another, this looks like another pair one, but lying down and waving. We wave back. Skit 3D, how are you, Skits? Uh, Skits 3D, five dollars US. Quick, her tempest is going to blow every, everything away. Let's get popcorn. <laughs> At line, <laughs> I can't believe. <laughs> Dragon Drake, Drakage, Drakage, uh, for fifty dollars US. Wow, thank you, sir. Shad would still love to hear your review of two thousand three Hulk movie with Eric Banner. Visual effects have aged, but the story is good. Would love to hear your opinion and critique. I remember enjoying it. I haven't watched it critically, so it could be dumpster yeah, fire. I it just could be just a popcorn memory. flick. Um, but I remember enjoying it. But that was a long time ago. I'd have to. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll give it another look. Thank you very much for the very generous super chat. Um, Ekthelion for four ninety nine US. Thank you very much. I know this is really late, but Gladriel is also supposed to be Elrond's mother in law, which made all the previous conversations sound creepy. I think they've completely gotten like in yeah. this interpretation. She's never been married, so they can ship her and not totally not Sauron. Yeah, they they like that's how the intent. Um, which like they've, Gladriel is actually supposed to be quite old. I think she's even supposed to be older than Keller Brimbor. Uh, like, and she is like this. She, uh, she is so poorly written. She's supposed to be this age wise elf, right? And Illinda literally compares her to his own children for how cattish and immature she is. Yeah. It's unbelievable the destruction of Galadriel, the character. But this isn't Galadriel. Don't be fooled. This is not true Galadriel in any means. Um, thank you very much for the super chat. Bo Mulder for 10 at US says, We finally got somewhere. Elf dude warned about Sauron. We also know what sword is. Why Gal Galadriel's in Numenor, why Isildur hears woman sing, Mithril was substance in box. Can this be any slower? <laughs> like, I know, man. And so much of this was obvious. Like, oh, what's in a box? Obviously Mithril. Oh, yeah. we, we said that in the episode. They think these are reveals, and it's so obvious. I mean, I look at the, I literally said, they're searching for the dagger, the yeah. sword thing. I, like, What did they look for? It's the sword. 
So there's, there's irrefutable proof that we've been predicting a lot of what this show has been trying to set up and reveal. And the most pathetic one is the who is Sauron thing. It's like, come on. Yeah, so slow, so slow. And so little has been achieved. And he could cut so much. There's so many pointless scenes. John Thomas for 10 US says, Guy Ladrialto, Queen. I am Guy Ladriel, General of the Northern Armies, wife of a murdered husband, sister of a murdered brother, and I will have my revenge. That's a play, or, or I know it's a gladiator. You're, you're taking some great lines from gladiator. Good homage. Gladiator is great. You know, my neighbour, Lisa Gerard, did the music for Gladiator. I lived as a kid, whoop whoop, in the mountains, and it was rare to have any neighbours. Yeah. And the random neighbour we had is actually, yeah, she's a, an award-winning musician, and she did the music for Gladiator. Her name is Lisa Gerard. Uh, she doesn't live there anymore, of course. But yeah, there we go. Damn. <laughs> um, Ferro... Ferroyal Rat. Ferroyal Rat. <laughs> Sorry, I'm... I'm I'm bunch of names. Ten dollars US. I have a question about the graphic novel. Is the leather-bound graphic novel all four of the graphic novel or just one? Um, I think it would just be. I don't. One. There, there's one graphic novel with four variant covers that you can pick from, or you could get all four as collector items because uh, these covers won't be available again. Um, except one. I think one will be the standard cover and. Uh, and then you could choose to get that same graphic novel in Leatherbound. It's not a different mm. book, but you can also choose to get my the second edition version of my novel. It's not a sequel. It's the second edition, just more refined and polished. And there's only like the tiniest little retcon I did in that. Um, so just to let people know what's... But the, the four covers for the graphic novel will be included inside the, the Leatherbound. So if you open the Leatherbound, um, there's, there'll be covers inserted inside. So they're not actual covers, but the pictures of the covers will be inside yeah. as like, so you get to see the artwork. Uh, that's part of the Leatherbound. So Imperius, uh, in the first version, was one millimeter out of wood. And the, look, this is one of those small little details that just, <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, saying, a big red combo, you're like, it's, actually... It's, it's a small... But it, it bothers me, I realised if if the blade was one millimetre, or half a millimetre, I think it is, you could make it out of sheet steel and it would be insanely light, mm. and you wouldn't need it made out of wood, and so I changed it. But I do introduce another important uh, thing that wasn't described, it's called crystallisation. Mm -hmm. And so it explains how you can sunforge something and still have it be flexible, so you could sunforge clothing and it'll still be flexible, um, but if you do a crystallisation process and sunforge it, it becomes becomes immovable, like solid. Right. Um, so, just world building. Oh, look, I'm, I'm a world builder. I love it. And uh, trying to integrate it in natural conversation and stuff. Small little things like that. So that's into the second edition, right? Um, better editing. It's, it's just a, a more polished version. Mm. You can get that in Leatherbound as well, uh, with the collector covers um, on top of it, and the regular covers on the inside and stuff. And it's Leatherbound. Uh, really excited. So I hope that answers your question, sir. Uh, Rick George for $20 Australian. Hey, it's an Aussie. Uh, how are you? Shad, why is shipping on your graphic novel and book postage to Melbourne a lot? $50 to $55. This is the unfortunate reality, right? We had to pick a fulfillment centre in the location where most people would be buying. And the large, our largest audience is in the US. And so the fulfillment centre is in the US. But that means shipping into Ashley, coming from the US, uh, is pricey. And not only that, it's, I mean, the economy has made postage and other things go up. Mm. Uh, our, our hands are a bit tied on that front. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, like... <laughs> But I, I cop that as well. I've ordered a couple of swords and stuff, and uh, yeah, I know what I know the feeling. <laughs> it's, it's the state of the world. I, think, I hope you understand. Uh, Babylon for PLNZ uh, fifty. Don't know the currency, but thank you. Hi, Shad. I need to comment on Cleaver verse uh, Cleaver verse Wise in the software development field. General wisdom is don't be clever. Interesting. It will get you in your. It will get you, your immediate goal, but in the long run, it is not worth it. Interesting. Oh, look, I fully admit that there might be different contexts, mm. uh, but the show doesn't establish that, so we have to go off our regular contextual understanding. And it just threw me, because, like, I don't see much difference. Also, the line before that, it was just forced. I know, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Kodama 44 for 50, uh, is that yen? I think it's Japanese, yen. Gives us an emoji with a thumbs up. Thank you very much. Xdream for 4.99 US says, when it comes to strong female characters, you mention Alita often. It is one of my favorite movies and would love a Night's Watch review on it someday. I might need to. I love a little Battle Angel. It's actually, it's not a perfect movie by any means. Like mm. the um, the plan that uh, the bad guy has uh, is a bit baffling, okay? And so there, there, are, there are some plot holes in it. What's, what makes me love it is the character of Alita. She is just charming, innocent. It's, it's a great example of strong female characters. But like, again, one of those water in a drought moments where action was fun, great character, loved it. I, I will... Uh, Happily and freely analogy, uh, there are issues in the structure of the film, but still, I love it. I love it. Natalie Brathwaite uh, for 5 GBP. They obviously use premium currency to speed up construction. They must have. They must have done something, but could you do it? Because that, that makes it, it in, in a couple faster. of days. In a couple of days. <laughs> Mojo Skyver? Mojo Skyver? Skyver, sorry. Uh, for $2 US. Elrond, what do your elf eyes see? They see everything. Yeah, it's the point he can lip read at like a far distance. Vassy Jr. for 5 GBP. Guys, every single show in the world ha now has a powerful silver haired blonde lead trying to copy and capture the worldwide popularity, popularity of Daenerys. Well,. <laughs> They are failing, and, he, and even Game of Thrones failed at this last season with trying to recapture or, or keep her popularity, you know, consistent, because she goes off the rails. But I see what you're saying there. Uh, Vashi, oh, that was it, yes. Um, Babylon for 10 PLN. Bye, guys. YouTube sucks. Drop my quality to 14.4p. Oh, that's, that's unfortunate. I hope it's been okay for Yes, we've people. been, we've got a good upload. That's not. That's just the direct, though, isn't it? That's, mm -hmm. that's just feeding from the camera up there. No, I'm talking about the. the you see the, the eight point, the nine. Oh, oh the top, okay. That gives us that's our. our oh, we've got information. See, I don't so, know what I'm looking at. See, okay. What, see, I need Nathan so much. <laughs> Couldn't do it without him. Um, burn, burn flu for fifty sek. I'm at work right now, so I can't catch this live, but me and my friends will be watching this later today instead of the show because this feels short. <laughs> oh, the fact that you and your mates will get together to watch this. Love that's it. endearing. Get some popcorn drinks. Get ready for a good laugh. I hope you enjoy. Oh. We, we, look, we enjoy it. We love roasting this with you guys. It's the only way to get some measure of joy out of this horrible show. Just laugh at how bad it is. The Dragon Reborn for fourteen ninety nine Australian. How are you, sir? Love your work, Shad, although I worry about your mental health at times. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for putting your mental health at risk watching this crap show. show. Uh, so we don't have to. I tried watching the Wheel of Time show but failed. Oh, oh, can't wait for season two. Mm. Not the way that the showrunners yeah. want me to. Bold rant. Can't, can't wait for that. All right, so that, this was the big one from Muhammad Al, uh, Al Benai, Um For, was that um, Qatar or? Yeah, I think yeah. so. And it translates to about a 400. About 400 Australian. Thank you. Very generous. Thank you for your reviews. You are far more entertaining than the show. I heard they can't explain why the Numenorians hate the elves because Amazon doesn't own the rights to that part of the story. Do you know if that's true? And yes, we did discuss that. Um, yeah, it's, I think they could. They can. They've obviously been referencing things. Yeah. Um, Antibra for five euros. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing things. For top tier Tolkien lines, please search and read Doom of Mandos. Uh, it will cleanse your palate after you suffer with rings of power. Cease comparing me to a horse. <laughs> I am vexed. <laughs> Zenzolten for 200 ARS. Hail Shannon, Nathan and chat. After seeing the BS that this show is and how much they try to copy Obi-Wan, I had to do a little edit. I uploaded it to Twitter. Hope you see it. Hail the fellowship. I'll check out my Twitter after this, sir. Thank you. Um, it's Tredify. Uh, is, is, is Tredify? For PLN25. Uh, Imagine sharing the plot of this show with someone a year ago that send you to an insane asylum mace. Yeah. Like, who, who reviewed this? What quality control did they have? It almost seems like there was multiple scripts that now they've just hacked up and forced together Ugh. by people who don't understand story. 
Voldrain 1178 for five dollars US. I'm going to take a wild guess. The writers from She-Hulk and Rings of Power graduated from the same college, <laughs> same class, and everything. <laughs> possibly, possibly. All right, I'll just quickly refresh this. Um, okay, okay. So uh, top tier uh, plot. Okay, yep. Here we are. Um, Buddha Bear for five dollars US says, "Been curious if you have read the Lightbringer series by Brent Weeks, and if you liked it, there is also a soundtrack for it. Uh, crowdfunding now. I haven't read it. Read it. I've heard of it. Interesting, though. Uh, in my novel, there are people called Lightbringers. I had no connection. I, I didn't even know of his series when I was writing my book. But I, I don't have too much issue using things, even if it turns out it's used in other things. If I came to the same." kind of conclusion and that was my own creative process leading yeah, to it yeah. um because i did have that question where people in my novel um uh, use uh, language in reference to light like if something happens like light that was a bit thing and stuff and like you light blinded idiot and things the same type of terminology is used in wheel of time mm. where they say light curse you and stuff like that and i like you know was i gonna I did wonder, like, well, people won't what, think I'm copying Wheel of Time, but that's the thing. The light is literally the deity of this world. It's the natural language that they would uh, fall yeah. to. So even though it was also in Wheel of Time, I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to stop my own creative process. For Even if people think I'm copying, I'm not. I'm using it because this is the natural result. Mm. Um, but anyway, that's a, a aside. I, I've heard of the Lightbringer series, and I've heard good things. So it's one of those things that I'll, I need to get to. Uh, thank you very much for the super chat. Peter Lyle for ten dollars Australian. Uh, you're brilliant, Shad. Bloody brilliant. So is your book, Pete from Devonport, Tasmania. Thank you, Pete. Really, thank you. That's, that's awesome. Olaf for one hundred se sek. In the context of the show, you can't blame the writers for being bad. The sea is always right. It makes <laughs> like a, it makes like a stone and sinks into the darkness, spline them. Also. To few good, also to few good machicolations. Thank you, sir. Um, fire three war. I'm not going to try it for ten dollars Australian. There's a quote I came up with. I think I think makes sense for these modern times, and I was planning to use it in my works. Um, an Olympians looking at ants. Interesting. An Olympians looking at ants. Interesting. Thank you for sharing that, sir. Sarah Connor for five dollars US. I showed my mum the orcs. She's like, "Why are they covered in baby powder and trash bags?" <laughs> Perfect description. Yes. That the vivid imagery in my head of just orcs oh. covered. Oh, yes. And the answer is depressingly obvious. Depressingly obvious. Uh, and I think we are pretty much up to date. Oh, there's one more. I'll just make sure. Um, yep, yep. So this is a super chat from CCAD for ten dollars. Will there be a second edition audiobook? At the moment, it's not planned, but maybe. I've I've I've, I've considered redoing the audiobook uh, to match the second edition, and maybe uh, making it available through other means outside of just Audible. But uh, I, at the moment, I, the audiobook currently is brilliant. Mm. Some of the changes aren't, aren't too massive, um, uh, and so uh, I'm I'm ha I'm happy to leave the current audiobook as is for a while. But maybe maybe I will do a, a second edition version. Uh, Seraph of Endymion um, for ten dollars ten euros says. Thank you for staying on watch. Thank you. So we don't have to suffer Amazon's attack on Tolkien's masterpiece. Not since Ray, Ray Palpatine has there been such a poorly written heroine as mm. Carindriel. Oh, Carindriel. Well, well, I like put. that one. That's well good. Well put, Carindriel. Oh my goodness, yeah. This is, this is something special. It is especially bad. Oh boy, wow. Wow. And uh, that's... We are up to date on the Super Chats. Everyone... Chat has been asking mm -hmm. where our other people are, where Oz mm. and Cordia are. So we will uh, let you know. So uh, Oz has actually resigned, and uh, we wish him all the best going into the future. Uh, we were hoping to actually have a, uh, a kind of going away uh, uh, video with Oz. He's been going through some rough things, and we weren't able to finish that off. Uh, maybe we will still still get to. Uh, Oz does have a YouTube channel and is uh, thinking about trying to start his own YouTube videos. It is uh, 
Timoz. If you look up Timoz, go subscribe to him, give him support. Wish him all the best in the future. And we've loved having him here. His jokes have been great and stuff. He will be missed. Um, and so, uh, hope he has great success in the future. Uh, Claudia also resigned, uh, and, but she was actually resigned before us because she's found a job that paid more. <laughs> so, <laughs> wish her well on top of that. Um, so, Myself and Nathan, they're holding down uh, the fort, as it were. But uh, Night's Watch, I always understood, would be a kind of revolving mm. door, letting people come in. And I've always kind of hoped that the people who come on board, learn to do YouTube, we learn the press and everything, go on, move on to bigger and better things. And so I hope, you know, Oz will be able to start his YouTube channel, find great success with that. And uh, I've been encouraging him to do his own YouTube stuff before yeah. he even came and worked for me. He'd be and, so good. And so... And let him have all the creative freedom that he wants to be able to make whatever he wants and things. And uh, I think that, will, you know, hopefully will really work out well for him. And so this is just, I've always, you know, expected Night's Watch would be like this. We're going to be bringing in more people and more people will join us. And then they will probably move on in the future as well. Um, I, I, I'm going to be sticking around. <laughs> You're going to have to. <laughs> um, but... Uh, that, that's it. That we are at the end of the stream. Thank you to all these super chats. Um, uh, was there any other comments from chat that um, were all good? That, that was just some of the most repeated. Mm -hmm. Okay, no worries. Thank you, everyone, for joining with us. Oh, boy. Wow. Um, uh, do go check out the... Uh, um, <laughs> the graphic novel launch for Shadow of the Conqueror. If you want great media, great stories, everything. Really, ninety. That's awesome. Do we have any of these available? Yeah, I think so. There's special Everfall merchandise. See this? This is an imperious letter opener. There's a limited supply. It's heavy. It's, 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 got it's solid. It. It's solid. It's actually it's cool because it's the true, true proportions of Imperius. If you see here, right? Um, the uh, the LARP one. They got it as long as they could allow, and it's still pretty long. This is like a two-handed LARP blade on a one-handed sword, so that's cool, but it's actually not as long as canonical Imperius. Imperius is, like, actual length is pushed to as long as you could, like, functionally have with a one-handed sword because it's so light, um, and so you get to see what the proportions are. Like, how, look how long that blade is to this handle on this, because this is, this is directly made from the 3D model I have of Imperius. And so, yeah... You can get these as part of the um, the launch campaign, limited in number, and so they're, they're, there's a set amount in like some of the limited um, uh, bundles, but you can add the Imperious Letter Opener to any purchase as well for the amount that we have available. So they're, they're, those are available, leather bounds, uh, and good media, trying mm -hmm. to make good media, and I hope to build off of this to keep making even better media, because I've got plans, guys. I've got plans. Um, I was thinking the other day that... Animation sounds really fun. <laughs> animation sounds really fun. But that, I do need a lot of money to set up, like, um, it'll be motion capture animation and stuff, and uh, I would need... <laughs> but, I don't know, I've got the stories, right? Yeah. And so... And I've got... Like, there are some fun stories I want to make. So there's a... There's a, a universe story that's basically like... A, it's not copying Star Wars, but I wanted to say, look at what are all the things that make people love Star Wars? Mm. The themes, the story elements and stuff. All right, Star Wars is dog crap now. I'm going to take the things that people loved about Star Wars and make something new so you get the things you loved about Star Wars um, and you don't have to, you know, see your beloved things. And so I would love to make, like, you know, full-blown graphic novel of this story, superheroes, whole shebang, but that would... To be able to do that, uh, didn't he? Yeah. Um, uh, if the more success I can get out of this, hopefully we'll be able to build onto even bigger and larger projects. So support it if you're in, uh, you have the means to. Of course, if you don't have the means to, uh, perfectly understand. If you could share it, that would also be really, really great. Because let's let's make some culture. Let's you know win, win get the stories that we like. Uh, and so we might um, start wrapping up. But how about we end off with uh, the. Um, uh, the little trailer we have for the Shadow of the Conqueror. Can we bring this sure. up? So we'll end off on this. Is the sound on? It is now and the mics will be off. Okay. Shadow of the Conqueror is coming to you in an epic graphic novel adaptation with the incredibly talented art of Mike S. Miller. The book will be separated into four graphic novel volumes. This first one, entitled Enemies of Self, 
has 48 pages of stunning art visualizing the amazing and unique world of Everfall with some of the best work Mike has ever done. With special collector edition covers and limited Everfall merchandise, this is your one and only chance to secure these special versions of this phenomenal epic fantasy graphic novel. Chronicles of Everfall, Shadow of the Conqueror, Volume 1, Enemies of Self.